Gentlemen, yes. My name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine, <laughs> and this, yeah, is the R&B Money Podcast, the motherfucking authority, <laughs> authority! on all things <laughs> R&B. Yeah, he here today. He is here today. All day. I'm gonna say is. What they gotta do? Go put on that. What, what, what? Put on your red. You you don't. Yeah. You don't got no red dress. You better go get you one. You better go get you, you one. Better go get you, you one. You better get you one so you can get rubbed the right way. So you can make some dark with the Johnny Kill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I Bro. got I got Kennedy to thank for that. He gave me my name. You know, every artist got to have that one record that's just their signature. I guess. So, I guess and it's yeah. like, Kenny gave me my name. Wow. And I'm so glad he took that record back from The Whispers. Because remember, no, The Whispers wait, had... Hold on, hold on, hold on. What'd you just say? Yeah, they, he had uh, given that record to The Whispers. No. And he said... Uh, oh, we start with like, an exclusive. Hold on. Exclusive. He was like, yo, I think this might be better... For Johnny, yeah, and that's how we ended up with. Uh, matter of fact, the Whispers even recorded it, and they said, <laughs> "I guess I don't know what happened between them. I don't know if it's some money stuff, but I was like, whatever happened, <laughs> thank y'all, shit." Sure. Because was because was Gerald was Gerald Busby over your project? Yeah, yeah, Gerald was over the project. Uh, um, Allah, Allah, me. <laughs> no, yeah. Mr. Busby, yes, sir. Oh, I mean, oh, the movie. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, right. I made sure that record was bought and paid. <laughs> I thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. Man, anytime. Man, let me tell anytime. you, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what my name would be. <laughs> but it wouldn't be my mind. <laughs> um, Johnny, first of all, you're, you know, you're legendary, brother. You are absolutely oh, legendary. You. We are honored and blessed to have you here. I want to, I want to say this. And then, and then, then we'll get into it. I just wanna, I wanna give you love, and I wanna salute you, yeah, um, for how you handled yourself on tour oh, and what you had you. to endure and what you had to go through, yeah. and yes. to thank power you. through that, and Ooh, and to man. get on that stage, and um, and be a living testimony, yeah, and yeah. to testify the way you did, brother, yeah, like, yeah. unreal, brother, man, and thank you. You know, Thank we you. still we still sending you love and prayers, man. Absolutely. You yeah, know, it's, a, it's still a challenge every yeah. day, and I didn't think, you know, you. I think we all know as kids, you know, and just adults too as well. We know when you lose a loved one, and but your first thought as a kid is when you think about it, what, what if something happened to my mom? Yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't live. I wouldn't be. And, and it's like, man, when that day came, um, uh, I tell you, man, I. You don't know what kind of strength you have. You don't know what you really honestly going to do because I couldn't tell you what I would would have done in that moment. But I just had to just go, let go, let God. And I had to lean and trust on him more than anything and anybody, man. I tell you, I'd never uh, even watching my mom and her uh, her decline with her health. It's still, you know, the inevitable, but at the same time. I always tell everyone, because I know we all got to leave here, but when you're seeing people that are leaving and you know they're going to leave, you still, I always tell everyone, you must try to stay in the moment, stay in the now, because mm -hmm. if you get too far ahead, trying to figure out when and how and when it's going to happen, yeah. what happens is you, you're, you rob yourself of the now. So whatever that is that's going on, if they're still here, they're still you're still in the game. They're still in the fight. And you have to try to stay present, stay in the now. And that's what I did. I rolled it all the way up yes, sir. to the last breath. But it was just um tough, man. And I tell you, I don't know. It's like I'm I'm waking up still every day. Uh pill it's just the pillar's just drenched with tears. And I, I remember asking um uh, Tyler, Tyler Perry, I, I, I asked Tyler, I said, um, he said, no, he said, you know what? He says, you're going to be all right. Uh, I said, I don't know, man. He said, no, you're going to be all right. He says, in nine years. I said, what do you mean in nine years? He said, it took me nine years 
He said, you got a long way to go. Yeah. I said, my yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I got to deal with. He's like, man. And it's it's just, you know, that's it becomes more bearable. But it's just the it's pain will gone. always be there. Yeah. I'm like, this is, man, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And I got a lot of motherfuckers I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I wouldn't wish it on yeah. my worst enemy. But, you know, ultimately... It's just that I'm, I, I, I have on this shoulder that's called the gratitude bag. And even through all the pain and through the heartaches, um, I still wake up every day and I make an effort to go in and reach into that gratitude bag and understand that at 81 years of life and allowing me to be here for 57 years, that God allowed me to have my mom throughout my life. He didn't have to do it because yeah, yeah. there are kids that have grown up without a mother or without a father without both and to have you know her here and to have guided us and worked as hard as she did and she got an opportunity to see her child carry that name and the family's name and 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 I never robbed and stole from anybody I even when I was out we all when you're growing up and you're in this business you're having fun while and out but even in the back of my mind I was still conscious of going I don't want to embarrass my mom. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. That's a no-no. So, you know, it's been a blessing. So every day I still reach into that gratitude bag and think about how she could have been gone and how we thought at one point she was gone and she she came roaring back and, and gave us nine more years. And I said, wow. if God has given us nine, if he gave, gave her even nine more, it still probably wouldn't be enough. <laughs> you know, so yeah. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful. Um, and I know I got to continue to keep pushing through it, but I'll never forget going back to work. And the guys were saying, you don't have to come back. And I said, this is not about me. I said, my mother worked three jobs. We were on welfare. Lights would get cut off. Water would get cut off. But yet my mother wouldn't allow, she had to raise four boys, and she would not allow us to live in the projects. If you didn't know any better, you would have thought we were middle middle class, because we never lived in with four boys, a single mom, a single lady taking care of four boys. Yeah. That we lived in uh, a decent neighborhood, and and nobody knew pretty much what our lives was like. Right. And that was hard work, and that was sacrifice. So I realized I knew what my mother would want me to do, and that is, she wanted me, you know, to carry on. And so that sacrifice that I had to make that time during that time was nothing compared to what she had to do to deal Talk with about the four boys. Talk about it. So I had to push myself through that process and try to get through it as uh, the best that I could. But boy, I my God, I tell you, I've been through some rough stuff in my life. But man, <laughs> I don't think nothing's nothing ever, I, compares to that one. Yeah. I'm making that decision. I have to go. I'm going to stand out here in front of these people and do what I know she wants me to do. Mm. Well, we felt you, brother. Yeah. yeah. I promise yeah. you that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was inspiring. Yeah. It was, it was inspiring. That's why, listen, man, I'd rather believe that there's a God and die and find out that there isn't than to go <laughs> 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 and leave yep. a body here and realize, oh, you was for real? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you was playing. Yeah, they tell me he was doing the thing with the gold. <laughs> oh, man. Rolled, yeah, rolled and man. stunned. <laughs> it's gold in here. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. 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 So, so, I, so I ain't got a mansion? <laughs> oh man, wow. I missed that on my mansion. <laughs> now this is a double man because down here we supposed to have forty acres in the mule. Oh now man, you know, you get up there and oh, got oh, oh, we talking hey, about it. Hey, <laughs> what happened, man? So let's do this. Let's go back to four boys. Yeah, four yeah. boys being raised. DC, yeah, DC, DC, DMV. Yeah, this yeah. yeah, original chocolate. Come city. on, man. Yeah, yeah. talk yeah. about them humble beginnings, man, and 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 discovering <laughs> that. You are different. Man, let me tell you, it's crazy. We we grew up, my dad was a minister, so we grew up uh, singing in church. Mm -hmm. And he started his church in D.C. And then when my mom and him separated, he, he moved to uh, Phoenix City, Alabama, Columbus, Georgia, and then Phoenix City, Alabama. And it was crazy because we had to be in church two, three times uh, on Sundays, and you have to go to Bible study, and it was all this stuff. And my dad one day bought us all these instruments, and um, I was intrigued, 
with the guitar. And I couldn't tell you at that time, I didn't know what it was, why I was intrigued with the guitar, but I picked the guitar up and I just started playing it. Hmm. I never had to guitar lessons. I haven't done anything. And I just started playing. And, um, and so my brother, one, my, one of my brothers had a bass, the other one had drums, and the other one had bongos. And it was funny because, you know, as kids, we all we used to fight, you know, and, but when my dad come in, everybody straightened yeah. up. Dad was no joke. He was no different than Mr. Joe Jackson in yeah. a way. I mean, when I say that, I love Joe, and I knew Joe yeah. as well. I'm saying in the sense that he was a no-nonsense guy. Yeah, he, he was, was like, playing. When, right. you, when Dad came home, everybody was like this. Your room clean, you got this, make up the bed, make sure that, so, but my dad, when, you know, the kids, we, we, they wouldn't let me play with their instruments. I used to play sick, and when they go to school, <laughs> they never understood how I knew how to play all of everybody's <laughs> instruments. I, I didn't know at the time I was intrigued, and that's what the word was, intrigued. Yeah. I'm just looking at this stuff, and I would pick up an instrument, I just start playing it. I don't, I just would figure it out. So, <laughs> so we, my dad made us form the group, you know, I was the youngest out of the crew, and they would kick my ass in front and make me sing it because they used to beat my ass. It was like, no, you can get out there and sing. So I ended up doing being the lead singer and not realizing that, you know, at the end of the day, I tell them the years, not, looking back at it, I'm like, how you like me now? How you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> you want to do what? You want to do <laughs> You, you want to sing yeah. background yeah. with me? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we let him sweep out the caboose. <laughs> ain't no, ain't no bongos on this. Ain't no bongos yeah, yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, are you guys singing gospel? Uh, we were singing gospel, yeah, yeah, all over uh, uh, the metropolitan area, the DMV. It was, you know. As a matter of fact, uh, I saw the uh, interview KC. with yeah. the KC. Yeah. 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 Little Cedric. That y'all was they going at it. Us, yeah, y'all, you know, we gonna be on, y'all going to be on there with Little Cedric and them, right? It's like, yeah, bring them on. Bring them on. Bring them on. So what was the name of y'all group? <laughs> little John and the Wings of Faith. So it was Lil John against Lil Cedric? Lil John and oh, the Wings of Faith. Oh, somebody got to make a t-shirt. <laughs> somebody has to make a t-shirt. <laughs> Man, what? Of <laughs> Little John and Little, and little Cedric? <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? So you said Little John in the what? In the wings of faith. Wings hey, listen, faith. and KC gave it up to you. Oh, KC was yes, like, yes, he did. Oh no, no, yeah, he yeah. was. Oh man, he was let smoking. me tell you, he was it smoking. was. You know, everybody, you need somebody that, especially. I mean, we we are all artists, but you always need that somebody that just inspires you, that push you, or you know, yeah. okay, when I go, that's a thorn in your you side. Better bring uh -huh. your, you, you better bring <laughs> your, you know, yeah. And he, yeah. it was like little said, little said, little who, little, little, little who. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and but then I, he, man, yo, he's the they, they used to rock, man. He used to rock, and I enjoy. I, the crazy thing about me as an artist, and I think for years it's been this way. I envy people that have this thing where it's like it's like. Hey, I'm better than you, or when that moment come, I'm gonna stomp him. I I have that competitive thing in me, but I have this thing where I anybody can come on my stage. Uh, I and it's like I welcome it, and I'm like, it doesn't matter what your skill level is, even if your skill level is I feel is greater than mine. It never allowed me. To have this insecurity thing where right. it's like you feel yeah. like, you know, like, oh man, I think uh, I'm better than him. Oh man, I'm watching, I ain't going after him. And it's like, I never, it's never been a thought process yeah. for me. And I think it's just, I enjoy the art of music. I enjoy every great gift and talent that God has given every man. And to me, I, it's like I welcome anybody. Yeah. At any time. I mean, me and Stevie used to sit. Stevie would come over to my house. You know what? And hold on. Stop. Hold on. Hold that on. is a hold flaw. On. I'm sick of this shit already. <laughs> what? I'm sick of this shit what? already. What? Okay? <laughs> what? What? Stevie would come over to my house. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Like, let, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, let the we, legend tell his story. How do you stories. get there? <laughs> yeah, stop. Uh, hey, see? Huh? There you go. There he go. Did he Stevie drove sometimes. <laughs> it's, it's, you know what? <laughs> Let me, let, me, let me just get something. Oh, man. <laughs> just so you if know. You, that's it. And then he said, this, got to do this. <laughs> when he had to break. <laughs> he had to pay his break. He got a bell back. He got a bell. I think that you should really come over and 
shut up, you're my bitch. <laughs> and I would go with me. People were watching us going at it. We do the dozen. I mean, Steve and I, for years, would just go hard, hard. Going crazy. And so I would go, I'd go, hey, yo, you know there's people in the room, right? He goes, okay. Uh, let me ask you something. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, will you open your mouth? Open my mouth, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna put something in it. <laughs> oh, hell no! <laughs> no! <laughs> go, no! Hey, you know there's people in this room. Oh, Steve will get you. Yo, <laughs> Steve goes hard. And let me tell you, well, man, it gets quick. Hey, and, hey, hey, yo, man, <laughs> he's quick. Hey, man. <laughs> That, that's the greatest of all times. Oh, shit. That's the greatest hey, of all times. Let me tell you the nah, reason why I, can't. I love these Stevie stories because as a kid growing up, idolizing Stevie. Yeah. People ask me all the time, what is your greatest, you know, uh, reward in being in this business? And it's not the awards that I've won. It's none of those things. It's the fact that I met this guy when I was a kid and... Um, that call him my brother. Um, it's just um, it's to crazy. me the greatest yeah. reward one could get because I've always looked up to him and still even to this day. And me and him were sitting there and go for hours, going back and forth, running and ripping. And one day, this motherfucker did a run that lasts for about a half hour, and I was like, "Motherfucker, that's it. Hold on." Yeah. <laughs> I'll be we right can't back. do this, can we? That's not legal. <laughs> we would be in there. I'm talking about Steve would play from 11 o'clock till 6 in the morning. He'd be still sitting in there playing. We'd all be hanging out, just Eddie, myself, and Nicole, all of us. And we would just be in there, tore up, getting... And I like how you just Steve threw Eddie in, in there, there just like this. And, just yeah. Eddie and, and we yeah. <laughs> look over and it's at 4 o'clock in the morning, everybody on the couch like this. And he's, he's still, still going. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> he's playing. just he is just the epitome of music. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. my God. His existence is just pure music. Yeah. But he is got the biggest heart, man. And I'm let me sure, tell yeah. you, this guy um has been a true blessing to me in every way. And I listen, man, I love that guy to the core. Yeah. I love him to the yeah. core. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so little little, little Cedric, little John. <laughs> Y'all getting to it <laughs> this in, the, in like them verses. streets. Are we going to do these verses? verses. Is absolutely. We're going to pull them albums up. <laughs> yeah. um, so we're in the gospel circuit, right? Mm, yeah. Is that when the discovery happens for you? Or, yeah. or, or do you make the transition to R&B first? No, it's, it's the gospel circuit. Mm -hmm. The craziest thing is, I remember you were saying earlier about when did I discover. I... Singing, I th the craziest thing as a kid, I thought everybody could sing. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought because when, when you're, you're raised church, in a place where everybody sings, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought everybody could sing. Yeah, and man, we used to gather before the service, uh, whichever uh, show we was going to do, and I, I, it was a joke to me, but I was it was fun, not a joke more so than anything. We'd be sitting there talking about. It. I was like, watch how many people make shout. I, I didn't think them beside. I was it was fun. To go, okay, I'm gonna wreck this, watch this, watch this. How many we gonna make? I'm gonna make the whole, I'm gonna have them in there laying out, rocking. And, and we would come out from singing the church in these churches and you'd see them falling out and stuff. I didn't realize until years later that that's not a joke and that's not something everybody can do. And that is an anointing and a gift. 100%. I had no idea. Huh. Yeah. And what are you, 13, 14? Yeah. 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 And they kept going, you see that little kid sound like a grown man? I this it still didn't even register. Well, so you, had this grown, you had this grown voice at thirteen. No, he was early. <laughs> yeah, early. No, it was like quartet. They, yeah, oh, yeah, you had yeah, to yeah. you had to yeah. be able to get yeah. out there early. Yeah, yeah. I, and I was and I actually actually joined another group while um, I was still in the group with uh, Little John and the Wings of Faith, a group in D.C. called the Prodigal Sons. They were very, very, very the prodigal popular. Sons. Who was in the prodigal? Sons? Um, there was. It was originally it was Johnny Holmes and the Prodigal Sons, and uh, then Bob Robinson took over when Johnny Holmes passed away. But they were terrorizing in uh, wow. in D.C. They was like, well, you, you that was okay, right. yeah. Right. And, right. and so I ended up even you know uh, singing with them uh, and learning a, a lot from them. This guy, but named, they were grown men. They were grown men. Bob Robinson. He, he was like the lead singer, and he was a guy that didn't have the greatest voice, 
but he just knew what to say, when to say it, and he could in the middle of a song, he could have this make the whole place just explode, just from him talking. Just he would delivery. just be just, hey, just man. Sad. You'd be like, man, yeah. didn't have the greatest voice, but he'll kill you. <laughs> hmm. He will destroy you. <laughs> I was like, man. So you know, you being around those kind of um, yeah. people really taught me a lot, and I didn't know I was taking it all in, but it was just a part of my journey, and a part of I think ultimately where where. Um, uh, God's plan, man. But uh, that's when I, I realized years later, as I started getting older, and I was watching how uh, we were becoming uh, people was starting to fear us, and it was like I th- it was funny to me at one point, and then I started realizing maybe this is a little something different here that's going on that I'm doing because yeah, I could get two two lines out of a song. And it reached a point where the church would just explode <laughs> before I could even get. And I think at that over a period of time, they started to recognize it was Little John. And then, you know, knowing what I did made them, they, when I w- we would perform, they was ready. You know, but I started realizing that this is an anointing and this is not something to take lightly and to play yeah. with. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. y'all make a record? No, we never made a record. Never made a record. So all even, live performances. Even, uh, even uh, Casey and them, yeah, I think they, they made a record. Yeah, they, yeah. We never made a record. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before y'all got to making any, you know, any recordings, you end up moving over to the secular side. Because you yeah. got to the secular side early, a te- still Super a teenager. Early. Yeah. I um, I went to school with Stacey Lattisau. Yeah, family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she, uh, we were in uh, uh, elementary together. And we used to be in a group. Uh, this, oh, this y'all go a, back a, to Glee elementary club. school. Yeah, wow. we were in the Glee Club, and Stacy's place because Stacy started before me, obviously. She, um, her place was like the, uh, you know, where all of the kids would gather. We would all gather there after school, and um, I remember uh, in the Glee Club when we were singing uh, at uh, in at Kim- at Kimball Elementary. I remember one day it rained, and she made. We all went downstairs in her basement, and you know I used to wear suits to school. Don't ask me why I would wear suits with an uh, empty briefcase. I oh, you started early. It was me too. Him too. You did too. I wore suits. <laughs> That's crazy. You okay, said so that because I'm I like, wait, now I know two of y'all. Now I know two of y'all. I was suited up with my Bible. Well, my brothers gave me the. They gave me the nickname Reverend Ike. <laughs> Reverend Ike. <laughs> I used to go. Here come Reverend Ike. My God brothers, and th- they were terrorizers. They lived next door to us. It was three of them. And then my three brothers, all of us, we used to all roll. But my God brothers, they was, man. Wait, but your, your brothers didn't wear suits to school? No. Only you did? Only me. And my bro- my brothers and my God brothers, they, were all, they used to laugh. Oh, when I would come, they'd go, here yeah, come Reverend Knight. And, um, but, you know, that's just what I felt more comfortable so in. So you at Stacy House with the suit so on? So I would go after school, still <laughs> over there, and we'd be over there playing and this stuff. So one day it was raining, and she said, okay, everybody's got to go. It has to do something or y'all going to have to leave. Whoever's not doing something, she was having a talent show. And so I'm like, shit, what the hell am I going to do? And that's, I'm, shoot, the only thing I know how to do is sing. And I didn't want to sing. But I was like, hell, I ain't getting my suit wet. <laughs> In the name I of this suit. <laughs> In the name of this suit, like, man, I saw no. you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm about to walk in the rain. Man, I, no. man, I used to be sharp though. I used to have Pierre Cardinning. That was when it was man, like, talk I'm about the tears. Man. <laughs> <laughs> man, we couldn't keep the lights on, but my mom made sure I had on the Pierre Cardin. Man, yeah. was, Johnny Gill is the original, the original Gordon oh, Gardner. Gord Gard- Gard- <laughs> that is. Awesome. <laughs> so instead Man, of going outside and have to walk, you had I, to sing for the I, kids. And the only thing I could sing was gospel song because that's all I knew. And I sang a song. Um, oh, so you was Reverend Ike. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I, it really came from my dad. My dad, I used to watch my dad as a kid, and he was a minister. And when he would go to church, I mean, go to, to, to church even during the, the, the weeks, uh, um, he would, every day he would have, the matching shoes, tie, the shirt, and all that stuff. And I used to look, and I used to be like, dang. That's what, that's I'm, going, clean. That's what I'm about fresh, to get on. Yeah, like, yeah. It was clean to yeah. me. And I was a kid looking at him. And I think that's probably where it kind of stemmed yeah. from for yeah. me. 
Yeah, for sure. And I didn't realize that until later. But I was yeah. just like, yo, my dad used to, man, he everything would be matching. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, yo, that's clean. <laughs> so that's what I think where it started for me. Yeah. But yeah, I ended up singing a gospel song and her mom came downstairs and go, who was that, Boogie? And it was like, yeah. And she was like, sing it again, sing it again. And I sang again. She was like, boy, I had no idea. I was not in there singing for a record deal and looking for yeah. nothing. I was just trying to keep my suit dry. Right, right. <laughs> and so I get a call a few months later and it's from Stacy. We had, matter of fact, had just moved, was moving back to Columbus, Georgia. Mm-hmm. My mom and dad was, was going to get back together. And we had packed up our things and was moving back to Columbus, Georgia. And I got a call when I got to Columbus, Georgia, and it was from Stacey. She said, hey, my um, um, my mom and was talking to uh, Henry Allen, the president of the label, record label about you, and um, he wants to um, wants to hear hear your voice. We were coming, we had just gotten back to, to uh, we went, drove back to D.C. to pick up some more of our things. I made a um, <laughs> demo tape with a, Twenty nine dollar tape recorder. Those you remember the, the, the when you press the, press the cassette. Yeah, time. I didn't know nothing about no production and none of that stuff. I never even recorded, so I couldn't tell you how you know you're supposed to playing. So I was singing with just raw on with the thing and uh, on the tape recorder. And he called and uh, he asked me to sing for him and a couple other people over the phone, and I did. And I ended up singing for a couple of more people. And then a couple more people, it was like he had the whole staff going, yeah, 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 listen to this. Listen to this, come on, sing, sing, it, sing it again. And I was singing, um, I sung uh, Shining Star from the Manhattans. Mm-hmm. And um, he says, yeah, we're we, we, we going to bring you up to New York. You know, we get with the D.C. and we never went back to Columbus, Georgia. What? I went to, um, uh, to New York. They flew, us, flew me up to New York. A kid by myself. Really? And my mom didn't How want you? to. I was 14. 14. Because I started recording at 15, and the first record came out at 16. But uh, I didn't know. And I've never been on an airplane and that stuff. So it was all new. And my mom, man, she was not feeling it. But she understood it. It was like, this is an opportunity. And, you know, I didn't realize until about 10 years ago, Maybe about eight years ago, my brother was telling me, he said, you know, I used to hear mom in the bathroom praying and crying at the same time. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah, she just, it's, it tore her up even when you moved and went to, to L.A. And she was just asking God to protect you. And he said, mom would be in there like two, three o'clock in the morning. And I would hear her praying and crying. And I was like, wow. Wow. That's real. Yeah. She lets you. She lets you go live your dream as a baby. Yeah, Oof. yeah. But they assured her, uh, the guy that you guys might have heard of. I'm not sure, but he was the man uh, running New York, Bill Underwood. Absolutely, he mm. was. I know who that is. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like my, you know, uh, uh, it's like my father. He's like a brother, father, everything. Yeah. But he, you know, yeah, he he he, he looked out and took care of me but I tell you it was it's a trip man because um I realized that that was a blessing because I got to learn the business and understand it early 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 on yeah and some of the mistakes some of the other guys made I didn't make I've been in the business 40 years I've seen a lot of things a lot of things have happened uh to me just like anybody else in the business mm-hmm. But I've never, I don't have one story where I can tell you I went to work and somebody can tell you, you know, I've heard a million stories about going to work or going to stage, man, I wouldn't perform. And then the guy wouldn't give me my money, man. And we had to pull a gun on him. I heard a, a billion stories of somebody getting yanked for their money at some point. Never happened. Bill taught me from day one that I'm not the risk taker. The promoters are the risk, are the risk takers. And... If they can't provide half up front, <laughs> then don't go. We're not going. We're don't not go. Going. And that started early, 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 early on in my career. And I've seen some things and made some mistakes in make, doing business deals, but not getting paid for going to work has never been one. 
Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Never been one. And thanks to him, he did 33 years and he's back out and that's my He did 33 brother. years in the penitentiary? Yeah, 33. Uh -huh. He was, um, yeah, yeah. Bill was, mm -hmm. you know. You ain't got to go into it. Huh? You ain't got to go into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, he um, uh, came out and even in those 33 years, because he always had my back, I always had his. <laughs> awesome. So when That's he amazing. came out, I said, hey, I, I, you know, you have no reason to ever have to go back. <laughs> Some people, they do what they need to do because there's, you know, they go back. I always try to figure out why people say if it's the horrible place to be, that they'll get out and then find themselves going right back. But a lot of them don't have any other have opportunities. Nothing. They have yeah. nothing else to nothing do. Nothing else to do. I said, not you. Hmm. You'll always have food, a place to live, and on your table, and you'll always be all right. <laughs> That's incredible. Clothes yeah. on your back, so yeah. That's you incredible. got no excuse. <laughs> no. That's incredible. That's called being solid. It's being man. That's called being solid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So you, so you, you get your first deal, and this is the first record that I heard. And you tell me if this was the first record or not that my brother Bob played for me it was half crazy. Half crazy. It wasn't. It was my first, intro, I think, record that. People took notice who I was. Yeah. I had a, my first record was uh, called uh, was Super Love. That was my first Super single. Love. Okay, and that was produced, written, and produced by Freddie Perrin. Freddie Perrin did all the stuff with the Jacksons. I mm -hmm. want you back, mm -hmm. ABC, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But you know, it was crazy because it was a weird time. Even as a kid, not understanding the production and all that stuff, I kept telling Bill because. I came out here to record, and I remember telling Bill, I kept saying, "Man, something like I don't know. It just don't sound like I." would like for it to sound it was during that transition where they was freddie had just started using you know the the electric drum you know the the the, the drum machines and all that stuff and remember most of his work the powerful stuff that he did with with uh, the jazz live musicians it was live yeah. musicians yeah. all that stuff so i was just sitting there thinking after we had finished up the album i'm like yeah i think that this is it but i was a kid so they're like yeah sounds good to us and i'm like okay well shoot what am i supposed to do right. but i even felt at that time and even though I didn't have a voice, it felt like I'm like, man, it's just not me. Yeah, it doesn't feel, you know. But I just having a great, that opportunity to work with Freddie and he, Freddie and Chris, you know, treated me as I was one of theirs and uh, going, taking me to church, Fred Price every Sunday, uh, just being able to hang out with them and him, Freddie telling me all these incredible, crazy stories. Um, it was, uh, uh, you know, I could, you know, you couldn't put a, a value on that man. It's yeah. just that guy was amazing, amazing guy, and I uh, had a chance just to say I had an opportunity to work with him. And yeah, and he told me he said, you know, you're gonna be big, but the person who told me, kid, I promise you, you're gonna be around for a long time, was Linda Creed. She wrote Half Crazy with Lonnie Jordan, who mm -hmm. uh, the plays with the group War. Um, oh wow! Yeah, Linda Creed. She wrote a lot of the songs with Tom Bell, and uh, from uh, "The Greatest Love of All" to uh, "God Bless Smash. You, You Make Me Feel Brand, brand New." So, I mean, Linda, she, she was man, she was a beast. I remember going in uh, in Philadelphia, going into the studio, walking into the booth, singing "Half Crazy." I had no idea what the hell I was doing because I was dating Stacy at the time and I was in Philly and she was in D.C. I was trying to get back because I promised her I was coming back that night. I was trying to get back to D.C. <laughs> and I was like, let me hurry up and get this shit over with. Right, yeah, and yeah. I'm in here singing my heart out. I said, shit, <laughs> three, four, five takes. And I come out of the room, out of the, um, the control booth and she's in, the, uh, in there and tears are coming down. And I'm just like, uh, okay. And she said, uh, she said, you're going to be around for a long time, and you're going to be a star. And I was like, well, I know that, because I thought when you get a record deal, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that happen for everybody? <laughs> like, but the craziest thing, do you ever think, failing was not even an option. Like, I didn't know that you could fail. 
when you get a record deal, just back in the day, to get a record deal was, that was like that was huge. Yeah. That meant yeah. that was a championship. Oh, you're gonna be a star. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you gonna be a star. So I didn't know that, that my you first, wasn't gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know my first record sh uh, shipped platinum and came back wood. I was right. just like sitting there <laughs> thinking, man, I'm on my way. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so, I had no idea that it didn't do. It wasn't successful. None. I didn't know much of nothing about the business. I was just in there singing. They were telling me singing, to right. sing, and that's what I was doing. Wow. But yeah, she did. And um, so every time I, I hear that song, Have Crazy, I, and right after that, shortly after that, uh, she probably had it then, but I didn't know she that she, uh, I found out that she had, had cancer, and she, that was her last song that she That's the last song she wrote. Yeah. No way. Yeah, so it was. Um, that song's amazing. So I didn't know even part of whether well, it's just the performance, it was the message that she had written within it, but mm -hmm. you know, um, so when many I walked things out, that went into that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to yeah. walk out and see her in tears. And I was just like, wow, wow. Yeah. Got what back. a journey. So you, when you get back to finally get back to DC, <laughs> did Man. you make up for, for being late? Dude, I was flying. <laughs> I, I had a, I had my first car, new car, Cressida, and I Cressida. was flying because I was trying to get back because we were supposed to go to the movies. and We were supposed to go to the movies. Yeah, we were supposed to be hanging movies, out. Jack. Which movie? And then it? I'm going to tell y'all a little something. I don't be telling nobody and stuff. I'm going to really tell her. She's going to kill me too. But, you know, so I'm rushing trying to get back. We used to, <laughs> we used to tell her mom and then we go going bowling. And, you know, I mean, we went bowling, but it was, you know. <laughs> at some point of the night. <laughs> at some point of the night. But, you know, we was just, you know, oh, kids trying to, you kids know. Kids trying to figure, figure it out. out. <laughs> trying to figure it out. At this point, you're still a teenager. Still, still a teenager. Still a teenager. Yeah. All yeah. this, uh, this is the second yeah. album now. Second album, yeah. yeah. So are y'all singing together a lot? You and Stacy? No. And Henry Allen came up with that idea of For the Stacey perfect combination. To do, yeah, to do... Um, uh, a duet album, and mm. uh, and Henry and them kept saying, "Yeah, yeah, we know you like heavy cream." That's what he used to call it, heavy cream. And he, he was called like, yeah. Yeah. heavy cream. Yeah. Oh, he goes, "Yeah, it's a different time." What's going on? The HR you know, department was different. HR department was, you know, oh, oh. <laughs> wait, he hitting the cigarette. <laughs> in. He, oh, he used to have Jesus a cigarette. Christ. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Sandra and them watching you. You know, <laughs> that's her mom. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know you like I heavy guess. cream. Man. Hey, man. Man. Uh, man. They used to tease me all the time. Uh, they used to tease me about that. But, you know, part of that was just, a, you know, I'm so grateful because, I mean, clearly if it wasn't for her, yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't have been here. And who knows? I don't know what would have happened, but clearly it was. Not was this fate. path. And that is yeah. not this path. So, yeah. You know, so. Uh, I owe, owe that to her, her family, because they were just, uh, they were absolutely uh, uh, um, rooting for me. And they didn't have to do it. Yeah. You know, but they did. They did. And we're around where? Yeah. 85 now? 80? Yeah, around 85. Yeah. 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 Are you feeling like somebody yet? Are you, are you? I was feeling are like you, somebody even before I had the first record, because I was like, I'm dating this girl, the hottest chick. And yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah this is I'm him. Up I'm, him. I'm him. I'm him. I know y'all like her. He's early. standing up. I'm so like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm standing yeah. up on my pimping. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know. Yeah, you see how I'm moving. <laughs> Wow. The me two and, hottest me girls, and my heavy the two, cream. Me and my heavy cream. The two hottest chicks in the, wait, in wait, the, the business two? at that time was Stacey and Janet. Hmm. The two most desirable That's ones. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. One was my friend, and one I was dating. your girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's acting yeah. up, as they say. He, he, he didn't care how many of the records <laughs> sold or not. <laughs> yeah. I'm standing up. Hey, you got all the records for the girls anyway. You got the girl. You got the girl. Yeah, what do I need to work hard for? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, man. No, so was, was that considered a hit for you, though? Was half, I mean, because I loved it as a, as a personal it record. It was but my record. I think the introduction to people were going, who is that? Okay. Because it... It it started taking off, and people kept coming and saying, "Did you hear that little kid? He sounds like a, a grown man." A grown man, yeah. And that's what Henry Allen kept saying. When I, he goes, "We just got to figure it out." But he kept saying, "You know, I, we got to figure out what to, what type of records to cut him because he sounds like a grown man, and he's only a kid." And when people would see me, they go, "Hey, he's just a little baby." <laughs> 
I was like, well, yeah, I'm working with something, no, yo, it's cool, mm. don't worry about it. True. I mean, uh, I'm swinging with experience. Uh, I got I'm a something behind this. With experience. <laughs> <laughs> Cause, cause and I did. If you yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, they was, man, I, I mean, I had a couple, you know, as, you know, a couple older pieces that started trying to, you know, give me some milk and stuff and help me out. Trying yeah, to feed me. Yeah, you know. yeah trying to feed you. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to feed me. The, sure you the milk fed. hadn't gone bad. The milk hadn't gone bad. It hadn't gone bad. It was nice. It was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so are you, are you getting some money at this time too? Are you getting oh, a little money man. too? No, he's getting my, taken advantage of. My, That's what's yeah. going on. <laughs> One day I snuck he's out. Being I was, used. We was at the I was at the record company in, in New York, and had, we was there recording. And then I was like, I was this girl. She was a couple of years older. I can't say her name because she's huge. She's an actress. Okay. And so okay. yeah, I'm like, you know, we hanging out. And then they would they would watch me and make sure I go to my room, make sure I'm I get in my room and lock me in, and, yeah. you know, wrap me up so I can go to bed and stay safe. Yeah. Shoot, like you niggas really don't know y'all playing with, do you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the sneak them to make out. sure they're gone, and I was like, coast is clear. <laughs> Let's yeah. get to it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He's taking advantage you hear early. Heels clicking. He said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Take your shoes off until you walk shoes, down the house. Yeah, exercise is my option. Hallway. Exercising <laughs> is an option. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, we skipped over. You're getting some money, too, at this point. Yeah, so let me tell you what happened when I got that first check, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here we go. Here we yeah, go. Let's get here we that. go. Man. Man. Trying to tell you, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. How much was the check? Might have been about. Two thousand dollars, I think it was. <laughs> I bought me like a, I bought me a gold watch, a nugget watch, a nugget ring, and a nugget bracelet. Who are you talking Remember to? Remember, nuggets was man like crazy <laughs> with, with two thousand. Nigga, he Hell bought a yeah. full kit. And no, and here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. On top of it, I went to the dealership. Wait, wait, you gotta. And they gave me my uh, Cressida and said, no, no, you can pay, you can start making payments later. I signed off the paper they did, Bill went with me outside, he was like, look at this kid. I was like, hey man, I mean, sure. They were doing that they back was then. like, yeah. So you got a new whip, a, a nugget, nugget wine. Man. No, you a nugget kid, not nugget just a wine. Nugget, <laughs> nugget, nugget, nugget kid. Nugget kid. With $2,000. With $2,000. Oh man. I was hurting Make it them. stretch. Make it. I said, Make man, it enough. Make it enough. I kept saying, I can get used to this. True. Yeah. I'm like, man, I, I'm like, man, y'all couldn't tell me nothing. And I'm like, what are we doing next? And you have a jerry curl. Oh, man, it was leaking. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking up outfits? Oh, man, it was leaking. But I was trying to be Michael. I was <laughs> like, man, so that's what y'all like, huh? Yeah. Tried to keep my curl down, my smile would yes. just be, but I was like, that's what y'all like and y'all digging, huh? Man, I had my curl, and man, but I tell you, the first night I got my, right, the night that I was going, the day before I was going to get the curl, um, I was so excited because I'm thinking, you know, the girl's like curly hair and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 whatever, <laughs> curly hair. So you know, <laughs> have, a, have a conversation with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he, you know, you don't, yeah, yeah, he yeah, don't he's, understand. He don't get it. He <laughs> so don't get it. I came out the womb. <laughs> he, 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 yeah. he, he doesn't share our pain. He yeah. doesn't share our pain. No, so no. I'm sitting the night before. I'm so excited, man. I was so excited, thinking tomorrow I'm, I'm gonna have curly hair. <laughs> tomorrow I'm gonna have curly hair. Oh my god. You couldn't tell me nothing. Like the first they day of school. Day of school. They, had to do, they had to do the rollers, put the roller joints in there, and then they got oh, the, you got to set under the drive. Yeah. They got, I mean, it was about a four or five hour process. Y'all say but, bye to the old me. Oh yeah. my God, man. But I came out there with curls, and it was like, oh, don't talk to me, man. Don't talk to me. Yeah. Shoot, man. I was like, I was on cloud nine. I'm like, uh, the ladies. The ladies. <laughs> 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 I, I was tempted as I was talking right about as I was, the lady. The lady. <laughs> approach him. I had to look at him. I was telling him. I was I like, know hey. y'all seen the new edition movie? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't show that Johnny Gill was a pimp. Oh, man. <laughs> they did not show this Johnny. My the approach, lady. my approach was like, hey, baby, I'm a model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tell her what you got on you. Oh, man. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh this man. Is great. Man. I have never. Listen, I had some fun times. The thing that I enjoyed the most 
even through all of my journey, it's the fact that even today, man, I, I've always been private. I keep and I've tried my best to keep, as Pop LeVert always told me from day one, he's like, John, man, you got to save something for yourself. Yeah. We give so much of ourselves, but you got to keep some for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I've always, I have always kept and tried to keep my private life, my personal life, where it belongs in my home. Yeah. And I, as I've gotten older being in this business, what I realized is this infested business can cost you a, your true blessing with whomever you choose to be with because people, especially today now, it's like people get to chime in to tell you about who's with who and who used to screw who and it's all this other stuff. And it's like, they don't care whether your relationship works out or not. People don't give a good, all they want to do is talk and be the topic, you can be the topic of their conversation. But at the end of the day, nobody goes to sleep and wake up and go, uh, I wonder, is he happy today? I wonder, is he? They could care. Mm. Is, yeah, they, yeah, they don't care. So yeah. I've learned that at the end of the day, they've been so frustrated with me that they want to go, oh, I think it's gay. It's, they, they've been called me everything but a child of God. And I've often said, if you think I'm gay, I'm gay. If you walk in my face and if you come to me to approach me with that and you think that's what it is, if you walk away on two feet, I'll be whatever the fuck you want me to be. Mm. I'll give you that deal. Uh. <laughs> but... I hate fuck doing around it. and find out. That, it's simple. Well, I'm from DC. So, simple. And that that never leaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I've, it's never been about that. And what makes me so sad about that whole situation is just because I got a ton of gay people, of friends, and I would never want someone to feel like you have an issue with being accused of being gay. I have an issue with being accused of being anything, whether it's a liar, a thief, being something, being that, something that, that, that you're not. That you're not. And That's it's it. like, I'll go to war. They'll tell you, I, I'll go to war on you quickly if you cross that line and you're trying to look like you're trying to hurt me or trying yeah. to offend me. I, I'm Because I'm not that guy. I don't wake up every day trying to figure out what I can do to hurt people. Only thing yeah. I've done being Annie Gill's son is I wake up trying to figure out who I got to help today. How can we help them? And so what happens is when people start to attack, and we've all been in this business and have had the all times, when people start to attack you, sometimes you'll sit there and you'll be trying to figure out, well, what did I do that you just coming at me when I'm in my own business? But we realize that's a part of what comes with the with the business and you learn and to accept certain things. But then there's certain things that it's like, nah, nigga, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. A lot of things can happen. And I've often said, I'm not a gangster, far from a gangster. But you don't want to cross that line. You don't want to cross that line. But, you know, that's just a part of life. But I've realized at the end of the day that more importantly, that it's just important to for people to understand that I keep my life private because I want to have something to come home to. I want to. And listen, you. if there are girls that I've been out with that you might see me and they might assume, but I saw Stephen A. Smith say this the other day, and I thought I was the only one. He was like, yeah, you'll get to see my woman when she's my wife, <laughs> when I know this is who and what I'm doing, and then I'll introduce her. So when I'm dating, I've done the same thing as, he, as Stephen, and I was sitting there going, wow. I, he, we mirror each other. I was like, when I'm dating, I'm like, listen, if you utter my name, if you're getting ready to go and, take, and want to talk about us, it's like I'm out. Get out, get out, let's keep moving. I want to keep something for myself. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I always felt like, let home be home. I yeah. want to be able to be able to relax, let my hair down, be able to not have to sit here and figure out and try to figure out, we sitting here reading these stories and got to figure out who just said who and somebody calling me to tell me, you know, you know she used to die. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, hey, I don't know, I don't care at this point. So, you know, mm -hmm. I get it. I understand sometimes people do do it because they, really are looking out, but at the end of the day, let me live mine. Let me have mine. Let me find out, figure out what I need to figure out. But, and I, I treat everybody accordingly. You know, I understand that for every action, there's a reaction. Sometimes a woman going to scorn, going to be scorned because something maybe you've done, and maybe something, you know, she might have done, but we, that might have scorned you, but at the end of the day, I still got to treat, you could tell me all you want to tell me about the history of who they are, but I'm going to treat every individual accordingly to how you treat me. Yeah. Yeah. 
give you the benefit of the doubt, and we can start from there. Start yeah. fresh. Yeah. Yeah. No, you said something extremely yeah. important, especially for new artists, new entertainers, new people who may get any kind of fame, whatever you may do. Keep something for yourself. You yeah. have to. Well, this will dry, it'll drive you crazy, man. Yeah. You got to keep yeah. something for yourself. We give a we give so much of ourselves. You don't well, get to well, wake they've, up. They've, They've made people subscribe to that being, you know, it's like the last effort at being relatable mm. is giving your life. Your life. Mm. And so the reality machine has has done a, has flipped everything upside down, whereas, you know, now the private people are nowhere to be found within the algorithm. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. the but, people but who if are... You, but if you no, really no, think I'm about, about it. To come back to yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. But the people who are willing to do anything, uh-huh. oh, they're popping, they're popping. Right. But they're being fooled. Yes. Hmm. Because yes. that cachet is short-lived. Right. Yeah. yeah. And to circle right. back to where I know you was getting ready to go, wow. the people who really have that under control uh-huh. yeah. are the real superstars. No, you, look at, you yeah. can look at the charts. Yeah. Wow. You can look at the charge. You can look at all of those things, like that. People really show up to see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. And I don't care like, about your man, Instagram follow. I don't care about how many likes you get. Yeah, I get that. Right. I'm talking about hard ticket sales. Right. 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 They're not. They're not That's online right. exposing their relationships. Nope. I'm talking about how many yeah. people move. Yeah. When That's Beyonce right. come to town. Yes. Yeah. I won't even say no names, yes. but you know, yeah. a yes. stadium yeah. full. Yeah. 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 You think you know no. about yeah. Beyonce? Yeah. I don't know. And you no. have right. no clue. I don't know who SZA, SZA's None. dating. I know. I have no idea who SZA's dating. It's none of my business. No. Wow. I just love her music. I know that. Wow. I, I, I know, know that yeah. she's. I know that arena kicking everybody ass right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 So so it's a that's a that's a nugget. Yeah. Keep some for yourself, Keep man. Keep some for yourself. Pop told me that. Give him all some the time. mystery. Give him some. Golly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and that's what I do, man. I'm like, listen, call me what you like. Just don't call me too late for dinner. My fat ass well. I used to- <laughs> 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 but, uh, as you can see, I stopped eating a lot. So <laughs> and she, I mean, you know, I mean, because damn. Hey bro. I, 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 I realized me and Bob <laughs> both me and Bob <laughs> both can be on the side on the stage <laughs> oh, trying to figure shit. out how to hold him down. I was like, mm-mm, nigga, you by yourself. <laughs> I can't, I'm out. I can't I'm hold good. you and me, Bob. I can't hold you and me. I need my knees for me. So, I need so, my so, knees. So let's go back to the curl. No, speak, speak, speak. go back to the curl. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to the curl. But let's let's speaking of now. You mentioned Bobby because uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh-huh. now that transition is happening. Yes, happening. yes. You are yes. a solo artist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got half crazy going crazy. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you you already said it. you was going crazy at the time too yeah. in a whole nother way. Yeah. yeah. You already the guy. Yeah. yeah. How do you? How do you handle whoever came to you? I about to you say, how? Tell us, who did? Tell yeah. us who. Who came to you? Coming and said, to you and saying, "Hey, I know you're a solo artist. I know you're doing your thing. We we trying to figure this thing out. You as a as your you know your solo thing. You got this grown man voice. I'm about to put you in this group." Michael Bivens, my little brother. Hmm. Let me tell you, that guy. Um, I I can't even put into words how. Um, sharp Michael has always mm-hmm. been, and the the craziest thing is out of our whole group, Michael was the I was the one that came up with the idea because originally Ralph was going to leave, mm-hmm. and so Mike's first thought was, "Shit, well, how are we going to eat?" And so his thought was not his idea wasn't it was going to be all of us. They were just thinking, okay, if, if Ralph going to go off because Ralph was working on his solo thing. And he's gonna probably he's probably not gonna come back. Especially he's the lead singer. He's the most popular. He's gonna probably be successful. He pro- he's not gonna probably come right. back. And they've so, already watched Bobby. Right. Yeah. So yeah. he was like, shoot. So what are we gonna do? Mike was a huge fan too, and that Half Crazy was the song that caught his attention. Hmm. And so when we was at the Whispers concert in in L.A., that's when we ran into each other. But we before had you paths. stole a record before before you stole the yeah. Whispers record. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. they was <laughs> allowing you in their concerts mm-hmm. before you stole a record. <laughs> yeah, they gonna see you on the street. I told him, I said, who knew? <laughs> <laughs> the twins will jump you. And then I looked at him, I said, who did that? <laughs> who did this? <laughs> I said, no way, man. <laughs> oh man, no I way, apologize, man. man. Shoot. <laughs> But yeah, he did. We met at the, the Whispers concert. That's crazy because I didn't think about that. 
And um, he said, hey, let me ask you a question. He said, did you, have, do you feel like you've gotten your just due as a solo artist? And I, I'll never forget just being stupid and funny. I reached my hand in my pocket and I pulled out Lynn. I was like, nope. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he, said, ah. <laughs> he said, he said, hey, yo, man, what you doing tomorrow? I said, um, nothing, what's going on? He says, yo, I wanted to see if you were uh, down to meet up for lunch. And I was like, okay. But it's never dawned on me that that's, it's like he's calling me to talk about right. some business stuff. I'm just thinking, because we cross paths from, okay. you know, yeah. doing concerts and stuff mm-hmm. here and there. And I would go and say to Ohio and hang out with him. And so it never dawned on me that that's what. The, he was just trying to do and so we met up had lunch with a couple of the guys then they wanted to come they wanted to meet up again and I'm sitting there going what the hell do you want to meet up for again and so that second time we met up they was talking about they want to go back to uh, a five member group at some point because the choreography was the thing they gave me was the choreography is a lot more impact. It's more Impactful. effective with, mm-hmm. uh, with, five. with five. So I'm thinking, okay, and but I kept thinking, I know you think it's not gonna really ask me about joining this group. I was like, I got two left feet. Fuck, am I gonna do? At <laughs> this point, you have not danced. You have Hell not no. danced as an artist. <laughs> no, nothing about dancing. I'm like, shoot, I'm a crooner. Oh, I'm a crooner. I sing. Yeah. And a pimp. I sang. <laughs> and a pimp. And a pimp. <laughs> There goes another t shirt. There goes another shirt. I'm a crooner and a pimp. And a pimp. <laughs> where are my bitches? Where? 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 Have you seen them? Hey man, this is gold. Okay, okay, so now they. So. <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, um, we. Uh, we went over, they talked to me about the whole thing about this idea that they had about me coming and being a part of the group. And then I sat there and I was like, wow. And then we went from the hotel to MCA over to Joe Busby's office. That oh, they had day. this all planned out. That oh, yeah, yeah, day. they had it laid out. Mm-hmm. And we walked into Gerald's office and Gerald says, Ah, new edition and Johnny Gill and my was dad. was 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 Ralph with y'all at the time? No, Ralph oh, wasn't with us. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. And, and and Ralph and Mike said, "Nah, it's new edition." And Gerald looking, he's like, he says, "Ah." And Mike's was Mike. That's what Mike said. Made our newest member. And Gerald looked. And he was like a deer in the hair. Like he looked for a minute, then he said, "You know what? I was thinking about that too. That was <laughs> <laughs> like it was, I was thinking that this y'all." <laughs> so but I, are I you still like, signed to? At, was it Atlantic? I was still signed. I was signed to uh, to MCA. Oh, you were on, okay, okay. Yeah, and so when Gerald left uh, from MCA over to Motown, he called Jimmy and and said, "Hey, man, I'm trying to find a." a an artist to sign, a male artist. Uh, you know, I was thinking, you know, like Howard Hewitt, blah, 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 he's gonna listen. To and Jimmy and Terry was like, Howard Hewitt? It was, he said, um, you have one. So Johnny. <laughs> and once again, I was just thinking about that. <laughs> 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 but no, Terry and them said, hey man, you got one. And that guy is gonna be around for a long time, blah, blah, blah. And they said, you know, they agreed to do half the album, but that's when uh, Clarence came in. They agreed to do half the album, and and uh, and and Kenny and uh, L.A. Uh, agreed to do that half. That was the first time they actually collaborated worked together. The yeah. But this yeah. is yeah. this is before or after New after edition? the New Edition. This after. Yeah. Okay, so we yeah. skipped. Yeah. Okay. We, we, have, we, we skipped. Uh, okay. It's so much forty years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. 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 Listen. Time. It's like, like we here. <laughs> we, we here for you. I'm great at the time stamp. Yeah. I'm great at the time stamp. Yeah. I'm not. He said <laughs> you skipped. Yeah. Yeah. Cause but now, yeah. Cause, so so when we went in there and we did that and and uh, yeah and then we went uh, and started making plans to go back because they had started working with Jimmy and Terry mm-hmm. in Minneapolis and. Uh, I didn't know at the time they had already started, it was it had already uh, started. and Ralph hadn't started with them. Ralph hadn't started. Got gotcha. you. When I went back with them to Minneapolis, they didn't start their whole recording process. 
is when oh, we all met up. And I remember Ralph going, what the fuck is this? Like, he's looking around. He still don't quiet. know. Yeah, well, he, I think he sensed something that, because he's looking around, it's quiet, and it's like everybody's just kind of solemn. And then they said, Jimmy, uh, Terry says, all right, guys, we're going to have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. They went into, came into, we went into their, their uh, room, into their little thing where they, uh, the office, and man, we sat at that table, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> hmm. All hell broke loose, and that's when I found out that he wasn't, he didn't even know, nor was he down with that, <laughs> with the, adding another member. He's like, fuck that, I want to share my money and split, start splitting my money again with, with five motherfuckers. <laughs> so it was all the stuff that was going on. I mean, I, they was in there screaming, yelling, and I'm sitting there looking. Yeah. And I'm looking. You're playing tennis. And I'm looking, and I'm like, what did I just walk into? And did you know Ralph <laughs> at this time? I knew him just from, in passing. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, well, what the hell did I just walk into? So it was all like, man, this it was it was crazy. So I remember uh Terry looked at me and he said, you know, or he did Jimmy, one of them said, you know, well, you know, you're not going to be uh you know Ralph is the lead singer and you're not gonna be doing any leads on the album. And I looked at him, I said, Okay. I said, whatever. You know, I'm here for whatever you guys need me to do. And never bothered me. I never thought twice about I'm coming in and I need to be the lead singer. I need to be, I, I don't know. I envy people because sometimes you do need to have that arrogance. Of assertive that, attitude. That, that, yeah, we just and insert just, yourself into it. Yeah. yeah but I maybe just, you don't though. Because if you, when you do, got the good, you like, miss out on an opportunity to join a super group. Well, yeah, because I, if, any, if, if, I, anyone, yeah, if anyone if else that, that walks that, into that right, that has that ego, certain, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're like, "What you mean? I'm a solo artist. I got my solo deal. I got my record right. out." Yeah, no, yeah. No, nigga, no, no. listen to this. You, you yeah. yeah, you walked in and made yourself just Useful. available, right? Yeah, useful. Yeah. Whatever you guys need. Yeah, and that's what Terry said. Terry said when they saw that reaction, and I didn't do it by nothing intentional. I'm just it was like okay, whatever that is. But fine. it dis- just, it it, it also never... probably disarmed the conflict. Yes, because mm, yeah. again, Ralph is the Ralph. lead singer of New Edition. Yeah. Ralph is Ralph. Yeah. So yeah. it's still like you know it's still like, for him it's a pecking order thing. Yeah. Right. And, right. and for, for you, you to just be not, like, I'm here for, I'm, for you I'm here like, hey, service. Man, brother, I'm, yeah. brother, it's yeah. your world. Do your... And my level of security, I think, in the back of my mind was probably, I still, even though I joined them, I still had to, um, had obligations to, to uh, Motown and yeah, solo had, deal. A, a solo deal that yeah. I have to record. And they were like, saying, yeah. Gerald was saying, we're going to have to do that. We'll do that right after the new edition album. Like, I'm so good. Yeah. I get to it mine. never, yeah. and yeah. if you ever notice, if you look in all those early pictures, You'll see me. I'm always in the back. Like I never. They used to be fighting for the position of who's going to be in front or trying to be in front of. They used to be fighting for for parts sometimes for the songs and the songs. And I was just sitting there. I was, I'm like sitting there thinking. I'm like, okay, just whatever needs to be done. And when it was time to take pictures, I'd go and get in my place in yeah. the back. <laughs> yeah. And like, for I you, never it was felt like and it was, um, nah, it was easy. It was easy work for you. Yeah. You used to having to sing the whole song yourself. Yeah. You, not, I mean, the only you, thing you get, now you got to do, you learn how to dance. I can't tell though. you this, though. A lot of those songs that we were doing, uh, I would do pretty much like the ad lib stuff or do most of the stuff. And then they come in and then somebody bring somebody to do, follow what I mm. did. So I was like, I guess I'm the demo singer too, huh? It's cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Shit. Yes, you are. I got, yeah. you know, so, yes, you are. But I tell you when I did get pissed, though. They, all those great songs, you like Can You Stand the Rain, some of the other songs, was, you know, My Kind of Girl, and they was Voice giving us these, these, these parts to do. And I kept listening to some of those songs. I was like, man, I like that song. I want to sing that. I like to sing that. I love singing that. And I'll never forget, <laughs> I kept thinking when they gave me the song Boys to Men, I said, this is some political bullshit. <laughs> I said, oh, they just giving me this piece of shit just to throw me a bone now at this point. All these great songs that I could have just sung on and just been, you know. That's how I'm you thinking about that. I, that's how I thought about it. And so I said, okay. Wow. So they're just throwing me a bone and they're just going to throw me this song, or throw me this track that's out of all these other great songs. Because I just didn't think it was out of all the other records that, that they had recorded, you know, that, that was It wasn't like the one. Good, yeah. yeah. So I said, oh, so you want to fuck with me now, huh? That's what took, the, when the light went off in my head. I said, oh, so 
you niggas are trying to fuck with me, huh? Gonna give me this weak ass shit. I said, okay. I walked in that booth. I said, made up my mind. I said, I'm gonna fuck this song up. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I, that is I, great. I remember <laughs> singing the first couple of lines. And before you know it, before I got to the end, and we, I started with the ad libs, it was like, I don't know if you guys ever seen Scooby Doo, and they'd be having them one stand over the other, one stand over the other, and they, they all looking. They was all, so we, the whole room was filled with everybody in there. And uh, by the time I finished the song, it's real quiet in there, like, whoo. <laughs> and I just kept thinking, listen, I've been doing my part. Right. I've been in here doing whatever you guys need me to do. Don't come in here fucking with me with this bullshit. And I was like, if that's the case, I'm gonna just show you something. I don't give a fuck what you put in front of me. I'm gonna. I'll, I'd set my the attitude. Light was, on fire. I'm gonna fuck this song up. That was just my attitude. <laughs> well, let me say something. <laughs> you sang that motherfucker, <laughs> man. And that is, you sang the title cut, <laughs> motherfucker. Uh, but I was singing it, man. <laughs> Like, ah, oh, shit, they can't find me something better. <laughs> Couldn't find you nothing better than the title fucking cut <laughs> that led to one of the that greatest groups of, the of all time. Groups of- <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. Hey, man. He's like, who knew? Well, <laughs> the moral of the lesson is always give your best. You never know. Oh, what you the just hell? never know. You just never know, man. <laughs> then you get humble. You just never know, man. You, you never, never know, know, man. man. You never know. Hey, man. <sighs> <laughs> so when yeah, you get when you yeah, get to new edition, yeah, yeah. is the adi- okay now you because you got to get a new edition check, yeah. Uh huh. Is you that, sign that deal. is that heavier than your solo check? Hell yeah, heavy. because they what you, what you, I heavy, can't even, heavy, what, heavy. What, heavy. What, you, what you get? Come on, now, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I man. know that's more than two thousand. Heavy load. <laughs> <laughs> you heard I the growl. You heard the growl. I am He keep it on him big time. <laughs> Too. And it was funny because during that time, we was getting ready for the the heartbreak tour, and they were having had um, had issues uh, prior to with the IRS. Um, so it was like a little bit unbalanced because I was the only one who came in clean. So yeah, right. yeah, you know, I came in and you know, sure. Uh, I'm money good. Y'all all right? Y- everybody okay? How y'all doing? Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got that uh, the the Z28, whatever that joint is. You need yeah, one of yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. Wait, y'all get a load of this one. Uh, that 500, five, 500 SL. <laughs> I want that <laughs> what too. What you call me? Yeah. Oh, man. I thought I was like, I, man, you couldn't tell me nothing. I was like, shit, I done made it, baby. <laughs> you had. Motherfucker, yeah. So yeah. When, when you came in the group, if, if I'm not asking too much. <laughs> Uh-huh. Are you a solid fifth? You getting a fifth of everything when you first come? Oh in? yeah, yeah. From yeah. The, from the jump, from the jump, everything that I started on with working from the day that I started working with them, absolutely. You hear that, Tyrese? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you yeah. hear that, Tyrese? <laughs> yeah. It was never about. It's all split fairly. All split fairly. That's how it was, and such because everybody's contributing, and it's the point. Yeah. If you're a team, if you're a group, that's what a group does. There's really no I. It's it's. When you're dealing with a team, yeah, and the thing is that you gotta always remember is you having an opportunity to be in this business as a solo artist. As it's different, but it's a blessing. But it's no different than like with LSG. Um, I understood early on that it's important to not get yourself tripped, a trap, trapped into a. To uh, being one dimensional mm-hmm. in that trap in that bag. Yeah. So I understood that it takes balance working in this business. That means being able to knowing that you have the opportunity artistically to be able to express yourself as an individual, but you also got to learn how to play and be on the team and play ball and play with the team. And that's yeah. a part of what gives you balance in this business. They can cost you to stay in there for a long time, yeah. 40 years. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. it can't just be all about you. Yeah. Sometimes you have to understand, yeah, if what I'm doing here and my level of success impact might impact this to help my boys or to help this group, that's a part of the contribution that you have that you're making. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now, if somebody tells you to get in this group and you can never go back out solo and can never have an opportunity to express yourself 
artistically the way that you would like to at some point, then I get it. You got to sit down. That's a hard decision to have to make. Yeah, yeah. But if you're having all these different things and this is all adding still to everybody collectively and individually, you're, it's, 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 it's uh, adding to your legacy. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's part of the journey and it's a part of the process. Uh, my group, we fought for years, just always button heads, always something, somebody's trying, not wanting to do something, somebody's trying to do something, somebody's trying to be. We did that stuff for years and began to realize and understand that the only thing that was the, our real issues that we all wanted the same thing, but we all had different ways, thought we could get there, different, yeah, by yeah. going about it. Yeah. And that's what it really boiled down to. Michael and I had the biggest problem. Me, and Mike and I would butt heads all the time. And the guy the, who wanted you in the group. The guy who wanted you in the group. <laughs> first time, I mean, we got in the group, the first blow up that I ever had was me and him going at it. And, and then the craziest thing during the recording process, Ralph and I would... Be, he would be in the room watching me record. I'd be in there watching him record. And then when we would all leave, me and him would go. And when we all get back to the hotel, we always, me and him would just go and be sitting around just talking. And I began to understand what was going on with him. Yeah. Yeah. And we created a bond, man, that yeah. to this day, yeah. that's my ride or die. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, uh, that, you know, I began to understand. He began to express what was going on with him and the level of pressure and the things that sometimes he would have to do that, that he didn't want to do, but he had to do it on behalf of the group and then would feel like still you feel unappreciated, so to speak. And it yeah. was like, but everybody was just trying to figure out where they belong and to wanted to understand, wanted to bring value to this group and wanted to be valuable in this group, yeah. everyone. Yeah. So, um, I began to understand all that stuff, but for years we would go back and forth, up and down. Our relationships went, and one day, man, I made a call to the one that we had the biggest problems with. I mean, the biggest problem of communicating that was with Mike, and we talked for about three hours, four hours, and there were things that we talked about that we never discussed. And I remember saying to him, life is too short, dude. I said, life is too short. And I said, and at the end of the day here, if any one of us got a call, one of us was out of here, I'm a gambling man. And I can assure you, nobody's eyes would be dry. Yeah. And I said, so what you're going through or what we're going through and the issues that we have, how important would that be? If we left off of the face of the surf, one of us, it would mean shit to none of us. Yeah. I said, so life is too short, man. And I said, we sat down and we had two, three, four hours of conversation. Here's what I don't like about you. Here's what I do like about you. Here's what was your problem, my problem with you. We did that. And as we began to do that, something changed. We started calling each other. For no reason. Hmm. Just a different type of bond was built. <clears throat> yeah, we was just like, "Yo, did you did you catch the game? Did you? Where's the kids at? We how could I? We didn't. It was like everything just started just coming together, and we continued to just. Uh, we didn't just have that one conversation. Mm -hmm. We just continued to keep I talking, yeah. and before you know it, I remember reaching out even to to the guys, and I said. You know, it, it, we used to call it the Republicans against the Democrats. <laughs> it was always three over here, two over here. It's like, mm -hmm. nah, nah. And I remember having this conversation going, what is our biggest problem? And I realized the biggest problem in the group is everyone wanted to be heard. When you seem to think that you have the answers and you know the business and you know it all, Here's what you have to learn, and this is what has been probably part of who I've been all my life, even when he was telling me about the song, I'm not going to sing on the album, the album, and I was like, okay. I realized that even if it's somebody that's saying something, they could have the craziest of the craziest idea. You have to learn how to respect the next man, and you can't be dismissive to someone when their vision or their idea doesn't match yours. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy how we choose to make a want to fight to make people see it, see our vision, our truth. And if it ain't our truth, it ain't true. Mm -hmm. And you begin to realize that 
I, I made that phone call and I said, um, what we have to do is we have to begin to understand that we have to respect each other. Yeah. Whether you agree to disagree, let the next man finish. You don't ha- listen. You don't have to agree with what they're saying, but allow them to be heard. Yeah. Something changed. Something changed in our whole group. The dynamics. I'm talking about with all of us to this day. I could be sitting here. You probably get a call from Ron, from Rick, from Bob, from uh, Mike. We just and everybody, Ralph. We all call and talk to each other. And you would think that, well. Ralph and I will be in the same hotel and be on the phone for an hour and a half sitting there talking. And you think, nigga, you're right up the stairs. Right? I mean, <laughs> Mike and I, we'll be on the phone just talking for hours, Ron and I. And it's just all of a sudden you started seeing something shift. Because even when someone would get to a point where they cut somebody off, I go, ah, ah, ah. Let, let them finish. Let them finish. You got to let them finish. <laughs> and I realized, I've said this before, even in in relationships with, with, with your, your, your wife, your girlfriend, people want to be heard. And when you're being dismissive or saying what they're saying doesn't matter or don't count or it sounds crazy or sounds mm-hmm. stupid, it's like, you know, it causes them to continue to fight, to want to be heard. Yeah. And so I've learned sometimes even in the thought of listening to people's idea and their thoughts that you might sit there and be going, nigga, did this motherfucker just say what I just think he mm-hmm. just said? You st- that's a thought you're feeling that you feel but you can't you sometimes have to control that to recognize that even as crazy as it sounds you know what I hear what you're saying I understand what you're saying but you know if you gotta look when we look at it from here but you gotta understand what that's probably gonna be blah, 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 but not sitting there and attacking it's not how it's what you do that makes the difference of someone not feeling stupid or feeling like you're talking down to them or yeah. making them feel like they have They're no value yeah. right yeah Right. And so I begin to watch, and you begin to see a shift in our group, in yeah. our brotherhood. That's dope. Yeah. That's really and dope. it had, has carried on to this day. For y'all to be doing a 40th anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Where we All just, six guys. Yeah. All six guys. And yeah. if there was one piece of advice I can give to every group, it's to understand that you got to respect the next man, the man that you stand next to. You got to understand that even your vision and your whatever it is that you have, everyone should listen and hear you out. But we also got to not be dismissive and be respectful to each other and allow someone, allow each other to speak. Whether you like it or don't, whether you agree to disagree, just allow them to speak and be heard. You will find that as many problems as, we, as we've had since since then. We still go and gather and go, hey, this is what blah, blah, blah. And everybody gives their own view, a point of view on it. And whether it sounds crazy, whether we agree, disagree. And then like, we come back to, okay, the $100 million question is, what do, you, what do we think is best? How, we, how do you think we should, we, sh- we should all? And then we'll sit here and we'll vote. And then somebody will go, okay, well, if y'all think that we do it, then that's cool. But everyone has been heard. Right. Everybody's voice, voice right. has been heard, yeah. and we've taken it into consideration. Yeah, the respect to make was the given. Deci- respect exactly. Was given. Yeah, yeah. But it shifted our whole relationship. This, for me as a kid, was was one of the most incredible moments ever when I saw the um, "If It Isn't Love" video. Mm. Video. Mm. That video looks so fun. That fun. was one. That was yeah, two left feet. So it was yeah, tough. With cowboy boots on. Tough on. Just for the record. <laughs> tough on Johnny. It was tough on, it was tough on the pimp. <laughs> he was looking at his feet when he said, why do I feel this way? Why do I, why do I, why do I, why do I feel this way? Tough on the pimp. Feet don't feel me now. Pimp down. Pimp down. Oh, oh man. Seven. And you know, my nickname was Trusty Boots, and that was my uh, my Trusty my production boots. company. It was Trusty Boots. Jeff Dyson gave me that name. Trusty oh, Boots. Because I used to wear boots, cowboy boots, with everything. So tell me. And I'm give from me, D.C. Don't Give me the why. energy around you guys like when you drop that song oh, and man. all hell breaks loose. because you haven't had you haven't had that. a smash yet right. you've had hit record right mm. people know who you are yeah. Yeah. you haven't had the smash this is a now smash. you in the super group that people have grown up on even you grew up on obviously yeah yeah you're the new member and y'all got a smash well i like to say this and i shouldn't have to out someone pat myself on the back but <laughs> I took them from the playoffs to the Super Bowl. Oh, what? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, yeah. 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 
yeah, you yeah, not yeah. gonna do Ralph yeah, like this. Yeah, you yeah. not gonna do yeah. Ralph like yeah. this. Hey, listen. Hey, them Super Bowl tickets is are, are they, they're the most expensive ticket that you can you can purchase. No, but for all of us, that that was our biggest record. No, was, and it got cracked. Yeah, it was yeah. Incredible. But it was and truly, listen. It was a blessing, and the reality of it is. People always get man, you know, when you came in, you did this, you did this, you did that. And it's like, no, what that group did for me, hmm. Hmm. let me tell you, hmm. there was, there's Speak no way I think I could have gotten to this point of who I am today because breaking in this industry is tough. Yeah. It's not as easy as be. There's, listen, we go into church, you can find five million people that can sing. I remember I told you as a yeah. kid growing up, I used to think everybody could sing. I didn't think it was nothing that special. So having an opportunity to to come into a group that was already established that came out the jumped out of the box they were successful you know yeah. that was a great springboard for me for yeah. people for the exposure that was needed when people started saying have you heard that new guy that can he can sing that's how they identified me but it was that opportunity of being there with these guys that was already uh successful mm -hmm. that allowed me an opportunity to be exposed for people to see and uh, and experience my talent. So, listen, we it, it was a thing where we helped each other, and it was supposed to be. Ultimately, this yeah. is what God had planned. You yeah. went straight to Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, L.A. Man. and Face. I remember sitting there thinking, because I, I everybody thought we all thought they were like rivals, like they would never. Yeah. And, and but even at that time, we was thinking. Who in God's name could have pulled this together but Clarence? Clarence Avon. Because he was having the Godfather. Over. The Godfather. Yeah, yeah. And that he did. And But both of them. I, I was great friends with Jimmy and Terry and great friends with L.A. and Babyface. So they were like, shit, we want to do it. They asked to do it. It wasn't like it's just he had to go and, uh, and ask them to do it. They wanted to do it. So that's why they yeah. split. Jimmy and Terry did half. And, uh, it's and groundbreaking. Did half. Yeah. yeah. It's groundbreaking. Yeah, when the label yeah. tells you the priority... This is what it's this supposed what to it's look like. like. This, is, this is what it's supposed to feel like yeah. and sound yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. These are the type of people that are supposed to walk in the door yeah. of the studio yeah. when you're a priority. Yeah. 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 High level shit. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't, listen, at the end of the day, I still was one of those guys that uh, I remember, <laughs> y'all can think I'm crazy as hell. <laughs> I remember telling them, telling Gerald after we had recorded my, 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 I was like, you think we got enough? You think this is good enough? I don't know about this song. And Gerald was like, uh, this song is going to be your next single. And I was like, huh? I was like, you think? I don't, I'm not sure. He was like, uh, no, it's going to be your next single. You didn't hear My, My, My? I heard it, but I was like, go back to what I just said. Every song that I sang, I just gave everything. Yeah. That I never... Did you hear Can You Stand the Rain? Here we go. Let's, yeah, let's oh, do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you I, heard that's that off. the one I wanted. You to heard do. that off. The, I was thinking, I was you like, trying to find more parts. I, because I, when I started it, I thought I was like, well, "Why are you taking me off the rest of it and shit?" I'm, I'm, I'm on a roll. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Listen, listen, listen. For, for the balance, for for balancing lead singers. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, that's it. That that that's yeah. that's top one or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Balancing lead singers. Yeah. Yeah. In two completely different worlds. Yeah. Exhibit A. Yeah. Exhibit A. Of what a group wow. is supposed to sound like. Wow. Brother, yeah. the combination of you and Ralph on that record yeah. and the moments that you sang. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like yeah. you were you you were you were deep and pause. You were you were heavy right there. Love unconditional. No. I'm not asking just to like, and, and the music was dark there. Boom, 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 right? But yeah. then when it brightened up, cause I did all of it. Then Ralph comes in and brightens up. Man, yeah. what? Yeah. 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 And it's so funny because uh Janet says, even to this day, she says my two favorite combinations of people like, you know, is she loves to hear together singing any songs is myself and Ralph. Like still to this day, she's like, he's That's pouring sick. so much champagne on us right now. Who did you say? Janet. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah, yeah. Well, you, I did say just, Janet. Just, I didn't say Jan because I normally say Jan. Oh, so oh, oh, yeah. Okay, he got he got nicknames for. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I didn't want to. I say yeah. I say you know. Huh. Yeah, yeah. The champagne is getting more and more expensive too. <laughs> <laughs> Make it rosé. Hey, 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 40 years, man. Make it rosé. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it's 40 years. Hey, baby, 40 years, baby. Hey, look at it. 40 years. Look at it. 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 Look
<laughs> Would you look I, at this? Hey, look, I know him all. Would you look at this? I yeah, know, yeah, I know him all, baby. Know hey, yeah, all. baby. Hey, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, man. <laughs> Listen, here's what here's, here's what people are discovering. They're just now discovering that Johnny's that guy. They're right now on the Army Money Podcast Welcome. discovering Welcome to that the Army Johnny's Money him. Podcast. Yeah. That he's a motherfucker. You know, They're just he, now getting it. And he knows them all. He knows them all. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the end of that record. Okay. Cause, who cause you who did says a challenge. go? Who <laughs> says go? Oh, who's, who's, who says that? Uh, Jimmy. Wow. Jimmy Jam. Wow, Jimmy. Yeah. Wow, Jimmy. Yeah. And Can't you stand that? Y'all balancing rain. again. Yeah. Y'all balancing again. When Rick got to the high part, because I need it, you know what I did that. And so, so then uh, Jam had him to come in. And actually follow that part of it's great. Of yeah, and it's uh, great. And then he he nailed it. Come great. on, let's go, let's go get wet. Let's go get let's go get wet. Yes, I'm gonna say that on a record and that you I don't have no you rain on. Mike, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Wait till they hear my part. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. So wait till they hear my part. Well, yeah, so y'all. Wait till they hear my part though. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> let's, let's go, go get, get wet. wet. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. you can tell. I mean, just from a just like. Yeah. Bro, you said at Exhibit A. When you talk about an album, when yeah. you talk about a masterpiece, that heartbreak man. of R and B music, <laughs> any heartbreak. I begged my father when you guys were coming um, coming to DC mm-hmm. at the Capitol Center. Yeah, the Capitol. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Begged, begged my father. I said, please, I have to go see New Edition. I used to listen to the album every day when I got home from school. Wow. Every day, album. In my, in my dad's headphones on his big old. Do you know what's crazy? Every day. I hear these stories and it still, sh- not shocked me, but I'm like, man, you, you know. You're part of our lives, man. man. Yeah. But it's like, I, it's yeah. like, I hear these stories and it's like, it still takes me back. I mean, like, I'm like, I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. But I don't know because you know you've been in this game for a long time and you have too. Mm-hmm. You never, I don't. You don't sit back and marvel over what you've done and accomplished and what you know. It's like because there's so much more to do yeah, that right. you're sitting there and you're constantly doing this. That at some point, that it's important that we should take time out, just sit for a minute and just uh, consider, look back just, and just think. Be, yeah. yeah, but yeah. it's like I'm constantly trying to figure out where else. What else to do? What's what, next? Yeah, so you don't, but it's like, and I hear these stories of how we all have. I've heard these stories of how our music impacts and have impacted people's lives. Yeah, we're, we're and your you kids. Think, wow. We're your they, kids. Wow. It's man. like, man. Well, I was man. at the concert in a, wow. in, in a horrible outfit. Wow. <laughs> you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you didn't get no, you didn't have no motion? No, I didn't have no motion. <laughs> it's you know, terrible. No motion. The, the, the no little young motion. chicks in DC terrible. weren't feeling you yet. No. <laughs> And I dance, but as soon as that intro came on, uh-huh. and y'all came walking out in that all white down them all white yeah, mid upstairs, yeah, yeah. I was I danced from the top wow. to the end of the concert. Wow! This thing I knew, like, like pop took you, huh? Slick took you. Yeah, my mom, yeah, my dad, and my mom took me. Like who knew? I mean, just think about the fact my first that concert, as a kid, man, no addition, man. Wow, mini heartbreak tour. Wow, that's crazy. Wow, that's crazy. Man. Wow, man! But you don't understand, like, like, and and I and I think it's, I think it's so important that you know, especially for us and our platform, that we continue to remind you, remind the 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 artists that came before us and paved mm-hmm. the way for us, how important you were and how yes. important you, you are. are. Yeah. Wow. Wow! Like that—that wow. that, that reverence for you does not change. Wow. You are still Johnny Gill, nigga. To me, to me too. You're Johnny Gill, nigga. Wow. When wow. you when you walk in, they ask Johnny, whatever, they mean, whatever Johnny want to do. So wow. that's, that's Johnny. What are y'all talking about, man? I, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, you earned that. You earned it. Wow! And Thank so you. we, Thank as a you. culture, like we have to be mindful of that. Yeah. We have to continue yeah. to be mindful yeah. of that. Stop like being you, forgetful. Stop being for you are the wow. you are one of the reasons why we are here. Wow, thank you, I, man. I'm so grateful. I'm just grateful. I think 40 years and look at the journey, and I can't put it into words, man, to understand because you know where I come from. So yeah. an understanding 
that this is a blessing, man. Mm -hmm. It is a blessing. And I just, when I, you know, we do what we do because this is what God ordained us to do. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't, it's it's still tough for me. Like, I, I just don't wake up and feel like, you know, or when I, I've never walked into a restaurant, I've never gone to a place and go, they know should know who I am, or walk in a room and go, I need to make sure everybody know I'm in here. Like I, it's, I don't have the need, and never had that drive or that to just go, hey, when I come in, I need everybody to stand at attention, or yeah. you know, it's just never been a part of my. I think your travel DNA. bag lets just people like, know that you, you know, you, <laughs> he told yeah, me yeah, the secret yeah, about how he yeah, did. yeah. Because I told, I told him earlier, I said, <laughs> listen, man, I didn't get one too. I seen you with one years ago. I said, oh yeah, and, and that yeah. was the point I yeah, started yeah, I said, out. With. Oh, oh, you just that go, was like I said, the first joint. Oh, I, I, like, I said, I said, you just gonna be a Dave and Buster's with, with a, with, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? With, you feel me? In case I gotta spend the night somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I, gotta, I got everything open. I need. You stay ready so you yeah. don't have to get ready. Yeah. Stay yeah. 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 I like that. That's, yeah. that's the wipe me down kit. Yes, um, yes, it is. Um let's 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 move into something, man. Let's 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 let's, let's move forward a little bit. Um you 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 form a group um with of course, our, our our brother OG Keith Sweat. Keith Sweat, yeah. And God rest his soul. The 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 in, the incomparable. I mean, yeah, that's I call him my partner in crime. <laughs> I mean, my partner in crime. My goodness, man. Ah, uh, LSG, bro. Ooh, man. Gerald Levert, man. Yeah. Um, who? Yeah. You know, God yeah. rest his soul, man. But yeah. just. Was just giving me nuggets, giving me game, man. Just you know, yeah. and I and I appreciated him for that. And then, and then I got to go on the road with his pops, and his pops would just feed Papa, me game, yeah, yeah. feed me game. Yeah. What what, what what went into that conversation? How did that even come about? Gerald called me one day and said, "Hey, man," he says, "Keith, man, want to do this group thing?" And I was like, "What?" He was like, "Yeah, man, he wants to do this group thing." And I told him, "Me, you, and him, and." You know, because uh, Rob was supposed to do it, and Rob is not, uh, I don't think he's going to do it. So, Rob who? Uh, R. Kelly. Oh. It was supposed to be R. Kelly, Sweat, and uh, Gerald. Oh. So I didn't, what are the letters for? I didn't know that. Yeah, originally, that's what it was supposed LSK? to be. And, 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 uh, and Rob ended up hmm. Hmm. not wanting to do it. And uh, so, you know, Keith was like, okay, we can get, you know, we do Johnny, myself, and, and Gerald. He's like, y'all, man, but I ain't gonna be doing all that dancing and stuff. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all niggas got to slow down on them dancing. We was like, baby. That's a sweat, baby. Look, baby, sweat y'all listen. You know? Y'all be doing, you know, both of <laughs> you niggas be growling and shit. Like, y'all, yeah, all that be. goddamn growling and shit. Y'all niggas be doing all that goddamn growling, baby. Don't growl. You wonder when you man. niggas growling on this motherfucking record, niggas gonna be a problem here, niggas. So, <laughs> so I tell you, man, every night, man, he was out with us. And, you know, getting sandwiched between me and Gerald, you know, every night, Sweat had to, he was, he had to bring it. And he was like, nah, like, I'm not, y'all ain't just, y'all ain't gonna just walk and smash me out. Uh uh. And he'd come out swinging too. Yeah. <laughs> he would come out swinging. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> Sweat competitive. Sweat got, go got, yeah. got them records. Yeah. 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 Sweat competitive. Yeah. Real competitive. Told, yeah, oh, yeah. And that's why I was telling him, I was like, there's a few artists that I I would never go on after, and Sweat is one. Oh, sweat I'm is like, one. you got way yeah. too much catalog. Cool. I don't care what you say. I'm That's cool. way too much catalog. Not, I, I ain't going after that. You crazy? Yeah. I I often tell everybody I don't care where I am, where you put me in a show. Mm -hmm. The key to the show, make just like what we did just recently mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the the, the um, um out tour. You want people to walk away, and leave there. Saying what a freaking show! What a great show! Everybody was great. People don't realize that if there's someone who's got much deeper catalog, and you're just gonna go, okay, I'll just jump over to try to be, you know, what happens is, you know, you can watch possibly a show, and start going here, and then go back here. Yeah, it's like yeah. all of it is about just bringing it, and so by the time crescendo, it's yes, it's yeah. like you leave there going, boy. And that's I enjoy what myself. everybody was saying 
They was like, everybody was rocking, everybody, you know. And it could be just when we've been on shows where you've had people where you, it's out of, where the, it's a bit out of sync and you go, the energy is up. And then when blah, blah, blah came, man, it seemed like the house, it just kind of dropped. And then the next person come, you got to go, shit, I got to work harder. You got to pull Try it to back get up these people it back, back up. up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But just not recognize, listen, put my ass first. I don't care. Put me wherever you choose to put me. Let me go where it's best suited to get it done. Help to make sure that the show is just going to continue to keep doing what it's doing. And I'm like, yeah. you ain't going to have to, you don't hear no, listen, as long as my money's spending and it's good, I'm good. I'm not sitting here trying to figure out because I've realized after 40 years, I am who I am. And that's not going to change. Opening or closing, it ain't going to make a difference. Yeah. Well, who I mean, become, you're, you're not going to open, Josh. You know. So let's just start there. Just, <laughs> oh, I let's, opened. Let's kill I the went, open thing. Me, me, Charlie, and Fantasia. Uh, I went to work. I opened. I was like, well, y'all, I'll go first. Shoot. <laughs> but you offered. You didn't have to. Yeah, but I didn't have a I, Listen, I don't You want to go no get that back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was home by the time she got on. Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah. yeah. He went yeah. and did his 25 yeah. and said, good luck. Yeah. God yeah. bless you. Yeah, there is that. The restaurants are still open. <laughs> restaurants still open. Yeah. There's some Mastro's out here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. here's the thing, right? As an artist, you do need to understand, you know, you need to understand your power within a lineup mm -hmm. yes you need to yeah. know like yeah. okay yeah all right i don't want none of that <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, i don't want none of that that no. could get tricky uh, i don't know if i got the voice for that I'm tonight like, <laughs> put me third to last put me third yeah put me third to last yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, because because uh, you you mess yeah. up your own shine yeah. right when yeah. you when put you yourself in a bad position yeah, exactly yeah. and that's what i'm saying a lot you, of know, artists you don't just gotta that. know where you fit in and not go listen this ain't hurting me i'm gonna kill that ain't killing my life or my career hmm. it's going as a matter of fact because you add on to that night to make it become yeah. what it is yeah. that brings value to yeah. you too Once again it goes back to the ego yeah right so everything right. goes right. back to that ego man yeah. i want to yeah. be in a place where i can kill my set yeah mm -hmm. not kill myself and then, <laughs> and then say good luck yeah let me tell you i saw you in cincinnati uh, uh, can i now call jan because i was with jan you know my longtime friend janet but can, I call it you can Jan. say it. You can say your name. Let me brother. tell you something. This is wild. Let me tell you what I did. I oh, you talking about at the, uh, the Cincinnati? At the Cincinnati, the, 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 and, and I Jazz called. Jazz I remember Jazz. calling. I called Charlie. I called Charlie Mac, and I said, "Charlie, I said, yo, uh, I have an old number on um, on Tank. I was like, you got a current number? He's like, I'll get it. Get it over to you. I was going to call you because that was the first time I saw." You with the full band joint, and I was standing watching oh, and we, going, oh, we went in. oh yeah. nigga, what's going in? Oh, we went this is in. What I said, yeah. okay, yeah. I'm going, nigga, don't you ever leave home without these motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, yo. Hey, Javon and them was going. Yeah. Man, yeah, Race. yeah he was, yeah. they was, man, I was like, don't ever leave home without them. <laughs> hey, listen, it's funny you said that because I had like, we had like six, Track show schedule for the end of the year. Uh huh. I said, no, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Call the people. <laughs> I'll bring them myself. You I'll bring them myself. I'm telling you because. It's different. It's different. It's different. And when you're creative and just having the freedom to go where you want to go. And At you can, time. and you got, you trust that to sit in here. It just brings it. It just takes it. In. And listen, you can, tracks or band. You still, you are who you are, and you're gonna do what you do, and we're gonna, gonna do be, what we do. yeah. But, but what we know as as creatives and guys of the feeling, yeah, in the moment, like yeah. that band, man, it's just the like, right band, yeah, the right band, the yeah. right band. Everybody don't got the right band. Everybody got the right, right band. Yeah. Everybody don't got yeah. the right band. Yeah, everybody don't know how to use their band. Yeah. yeah, and the yeah. band don't know how. Like we we have a you got a marriage. We got a thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's man. just. I was looking, I remember watching, I was going, yo, I said, Mac, I got an old number on him. You got a new one? Because I was going to I was try to find you because oh, I was go. just wanted to tell you. You could introduce me to Janet. Don't leave home <laughs> the You could introduce me to Jan. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we, so we didn't got, we, we, we went around this a, a certain way today. And we've, we've okay, the Johnny Gill, humble Johnny Gill. I've, I've done multiple groups. Yeah. 
Now it's time to get to Johnny Gill, the major R&B superstar solo artist. Because mm-hmm. we tapped on when you was, you know, yeah. he was getting your thing going, but yeah. then you got in the group. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. now you got Jimmy and Terry, you got L.A. and Babyface, yeah. and you're going to make your official, official solo album. Because this was yeah. this one, it became official. Yeah. Rub yeah. you the right way. way. Yeah. So, okay, so let me give you Rub You the Right Way. Let me tell you Rub You the Right Way. Rub You Stroke. the Right Way. Rub You the Right Way came on. <laughs> Stroke. Stroke. Rub You the Right Way came on. I was like, that's, just, that's pretty aggressive. That's aggressive that's and just, random. That's just, and I'm, you, you and I'm, and I'm watching you. Right and I was like, hold on, he's about to give us where it came from. You know where that came from, right? No. Jimmy and Terry said, what would Teddy be doing if this juncture of his life oh, if he had to P. do one of those kind of records Teddy P and it was wow. like because he was always so aggressive but you yeah. you yeah. got you got you got what, what I want yeah. so it was like it was like yo <laughs> those guys are just geniuses Jim and Terry Lewis geniuses. are just geniuses yeah. Yeah. bro yeah. they was like so what? you know that's what they wanted me to what, what they saw and it was like this would be what TP would be so when I heard the record as a kid, mm-hmm. you know, just as a kid and and already being a fan, I was listening to the record and I was like, I don't, I don't think that's a Johnny Kill. I don't, I don't think that's a Johnny Kill. <laughs> like, I like. I don't, you didn't like it, no? Because he looked like MC Hammer in the video <laughs> with, with the pants. Oh, with the black with, guns, not the joint. With the, the, the big. I had the a, black. Le- no, it was a shiny red. Was it red? No, the patent no, leather. The patent black leather. with the. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I just didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know what was happening, and but I was you like, know what that what and, happened there, and, and what kept sticking in my head was drunk, and I just kept hearing that, <laughs> and rub you the right way, <laughs> and I just that's all I kept hearing, yeah, and I was yeah. like, that's that's not the Johnny, that, but then yeah. he said something about some tenderness it, too. That's like you've been missing in, yeah, in the mad. But think like, about Teddy with the, the, that with no, lyrically, it was dead hard. Now that you say it. Your wish is my command. No, now that you Teddy say it, I work hard. On. <laughs> yeah. And so. it was like, no, because I'm a church kid. So I'm like, that's like a gospel guy singing in the church. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that's where I was. And I didn't know nothing about records. I didn't know about hits, nothing. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. I just knew. I was like, I was like, okay, all right. All right. Okay. How are you feeling? Do, do you feel the love when you put out Rub You the Right Way? Man, let me tell you. I, I knew... Because I was just coming off of the the, the stuff with the guys with mm-hmm. the audition, I understood and knew how important it was to find a tempo record because yeah, I could do the ballads with my eyes closed. We knew that. Yeah, yes. yeah, the yeah. challenge was going to be how do you get them in here and get some tempo records get because people on their feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that was when they came uh, with that one, and I was like, okay, I think I think we might be all right with this one. No, who, you do who did Rubby the Right Way? Uh, Jimmy and Terry. Jimmy and Terry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Were you doing a concert? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in it. Yeah. I'm, fuck how I felt as a kid. <laughs> you sing that motherfucking concert right now? Yeah, and that bass line. Is, I, yeah. I am with you. <laughs> Shoulders, everything. <laughs> when I'm done, I'm gone. Uh, I don't know why. Like... I don't know why that record is like that for me now. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea. Because it was made for grownups. It wasn't made for, <laughs> wasn't made for no goddamn you were a kid, kids. Bro. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't made for us. But yeah, it was a plan behind that. And that was what the whole purpose of that record it was a great and setup. the fat it was, it sex. Was, but they wanted yeah. to go, okay, we're going to go tempo out uh, first instead of, you know, because we had my, my mind on it. But yeah. we went, he was like, let's, let's do tempo first because we were like, okay, we just got to dial in a couple tempo records. And then remember, right after my, my mind, we came back. With fair weather, it's, it was like okay, let's just go back to another. Fair tempo was fire. to try to figure out to keep. Who up. did Lady Du Jour? Uh, Randy Ran and uh, and Jimmy and Terry. Oh my god! Yeah, that record. It takes me back to my childhood. My mother loved that record. Mm, really, my mother used to love that record. That was the very last record I recorded on uh, the Rub You album, and I remember <laughs> I told Terry, I called them and said, "Hey, yo, um, no, I didn't. I was, we was in the studio, and I said." Um, do you, you think we we got enough um, records? I don't, do you think this is? And, and Terry looked at me and said, "Negro, get your ass out of here. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> We're done." I was like, "And uh, Lady of the was the very last record we recorded, I'm and I'm still thinking we don't have enough." Wow. 
Hey, who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Also, we found out on the podcast, uh, Johnny Gill doesn't know hit records. <laughs> he doesn't even know his own hit records. He just sings, ladies and gentlemen. He just does his best on every record. On every record. That's it. Let the chips fall Let where they may. Let the chips fall where they may. He's like Ron Burgundy. He just reads oh, the teleprompter. Yeah. That's it. Okay, so you, got, so you got these smash records. You got these smashes. My, my, my is going crazy. Uh, crazy. Uh, You're coming wolf. off a Heartbreak album. Y'all got smashes. He's a rock star. What 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 is your fee? What are you getting a show back, at this point as a solo artist? Uh, back, back then, then, ooh, it might have been about like maybe seventy five, seventy five thousand. I think it was at that point. It was because we I, I, my first tour, uh, major tour was myself. Uh, BBD and Sweat on the Triple Threat tour. Ooh, so wow. I think it was around about 75. So inflation makes that about almost 200 a night. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, absolutely. Easy. Inflation. Absolutely. Easy. Oh, you kill him. Yeah, and it was like, man, and I went on first. I was like, shoot, it was like, they was fighting, talking about who's going. I was like, I'll go first. Are y'all doing, <laughs> are y'all doing club doing postings and appearances back Ooh. then or no? Uh, are, nah. You're not getting the club that was a money? thing. It wasn't even back then. Yeah. It wasn't even, nah. I just, shoot, we, I'd go The on, meet and greet. And by the time they, no, there was no such thing as that Y'all didn't even do a meet and greet Well, either? we had some meet and greets going on. I mean, we, listen, you, we, you, we you ain't talking about the meet and you know greet. The got We're not talking about that. That's how we meet and greet. What you like for me to explain back then when I was really standing up on my pimping? Yeah. Hey, listen, yeah, yeah. if you would like to, yeah. <laughs> it's up to you, baby. <laughs> it's up to you. We're not going to stop. <laughs> but he was no, standing. Man, let me tell you, we had, those were the good old days where there wasn't videos yeah. and camera phones Talk about the and, and all that yeah. stuff. Talk about you the good could old days. just have fun, man. Great. Why tell Talk, you know what I mean? We would just Wait, have good, those good fun. times. I'm talking about, man, man, I didn't know some nights if I was a singer or a boxer because I was going one, two, three, four rounds. And I'd be like, hey. Hmm. And i come out, man. I'd With be a new go, opponent? Why is this nigga so happy and jumping across the stage looking like a... <laughs> I was like, hey, was man. Time. I was feeling real good. He was feeling real appreciated. I used to tell him I'm a model. <laughs> Are you still modeling into? Okay. You were still modeling too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Him. Yeah. Johnny Gill? Johnny Gill. Johnny Gill. I had issues. What do you want? I had issues. <laughs> Getting 75000 a night. Uh-huh. Oh, Shoot, man. you. I was standing up on my business. Stupid money back then. Man. And you know, that was considered probably back then was almost like getting probably like almost uh, like close to like a quarter of a million basically. Yes. I would say somewhere yeah. in between yeah. that. That's, yeah. what that was That's what that was. That's what that was. That's the height. Much. And y'all yeah. doing 30, 40. Shows on yeah. those tours. Yeah. And y'all doing arenas. Yeah, we're doing arenas. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. And then yeah. the Boomerang soundtrack. Track. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Yeah. One of my favorite songs. One of my favorite, probably my favorite Johnny Gill song. Really? Wow. Oh my God. Special you know, record. I recorded that song in a matter of about a good 30 minutes because Kenny and them used to laugh. And Terry, Terry, when I when I didn't want to record, I'd go in and I'd be standing and I'd be singing and Terry would go, Negro, go home. You don't feel like singing tonight. And then when I go, I knew I was coming and I had to get the record knocked out. And then I started saying, he go, oh, suck it, suck it now. <laughs> Here we go. We <laughs> got it. But I, would, I, would, I would play him. When I was like tired and I don't feel like recording, I'd be yeah. like, just sitting there and just he go, come on man he goes Negro go home you don't want to sing tonight <laughs> you was a star yeah he's a star you think you want to force something out of a superstar no no yeah, learn, how, know, learn yeah, how they to knew. ride the wave with a superstar and this was, and get the best was a it. secret to Jimmy and Terry that I think blew all of us away and the reason why I think they just are second to none We'll sit in this room and just be talking. And we used to do that back then. Just be sitting around talking, laughing, and joking, wrangling each other, and just talking. And they're in there talking. We eat and just talk. And you go back to the hotel, come back to the studio. They done wrote a song and written from some shit we was talking, talking about that about. you'd be like, Yeah, that fast. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. it's like you go. So they would pay attention. They knew. 
when you was in the mood to sing, they knew mm-hmm. when you wasn't. They knew when you was in good voice when you wasn't. They all, but and they would just they they were like sponges. They were just absorbing everything, no matter what you say. Something funny, something serious, or you're talking to somebody about something, and then they could figure out how to how actually to put that in the carve this into. And you'd be like, yeah. God dang, wow. They weren't, they weren't in a yeah. rush, right? Yeah, which is yeah. why their music is it's timeless. Still time, it's timeless. Yeah. Yeah, We're in a never, rush. Yeah. We're gonna make he smash records, and we're gonna yeah. take the proper time. Yep, to, to do, do it. So. To do it. Yeah. Yep, they sure. And Keep, I've seen it, witnessed it. Them telling the record label, "Yo, we're gonna be done when we're done." <laughs> I've oh, that's a great that. position to be in. It's a great position. You know, can yeah. you? Can you? Because you gave us, you know, early on, and people gonna want. Hey, listen, if we don't get into it, people gonna be on us about it. Yeah, because you gave us a little bit of insight. What is the story behind my my my? Because now that we know that it was the whispers and like, what's the story behind my my my? Well, as far as when you say the story, as so far as, I mean, because you gave us a piece of, I'm saying well, like, the, okay, it was a song that was um, that Kenny had written for for the whispers, and he had given it to them, and I I think that they had did uh, the vocals on it. Something happened within, I think. Maybe the money problem, money issues. I'm not sure if that was yeah. exactly what it is, but I do know Kenny was saying, um, "I think this song fits Johnny better," and and so I didn't hear the whispers vocals or anything on oh, it. Oh, you didn't at, at first. You didn't know. No, I didn't know. I didn't know. It was just when they bought that song and they bought in and. Um, and I think Kenny might have been on it at mm-hmm. that point. Uh-huh. I, I, now I'm listening for I'm it. I'm listening too. Yeah. What a powerful yeah. record. Yeah. And uh, and then, you know, Kenny was like, you know, this is, I, who knew? Like I said, that that was going to be my signature song. I, you know, it was like, I did all that I could with it, going, let me just, every song that I just always approached it like going, let me focus and try to give it the best that I can give it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and give my best interpretation of it. And you know somebody who taught me about that was Luther Vandross. Hmm. Um, I opened for him with Stacey uh, Lattisaw years ago. And I remember remember the first time, because Luther did not play, Stacey allowed me to have a section where I just did, you know, a song. And Luther saw it one night... <laughs> And said, uh, oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 We can't have that. <laughs> that was my first meeting to Luther. <laughs> yeah. Not on his stage. No. Not on his stage. No, 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 no. <laughs> and, Turn his mic off. <laughs> and I remember um, some kind of way we met later. And he told me, he said, um, you know my favorite my all-time favorite johnny gill song and i said what he said baby it's you and i said what that was a remake we did on the duet album with with with, uh with stacy and he said to me i said what is it that you like about that song he said you're phrasing and i'm sitting there thinking what is that thing what's a a phrase (laughs) he said your tone i said what's a tone all I knew was I was just singing, singing. But yeah. and that's when I was introduced to the consciousness of understanding how to tell the story. And that's when I started listening to tones. That's when I really started getting into the Donny Hathaways. Mm. And I was always into Stevie and um and the the the, the Peebo Brysons and Teddy and all of them, but it started to dawn on me. It started to register what to understand, it was. Understand, yeah, yeah. Lou and how to dial it up. And that was my road dog, man. We just we ended up clicking. I remember every every time Luther would come out with a record, he would play. Well, one, let me tell you this real funny story though. I, one year, you know, he would have a a um, um, New Year's Eve party, and Lou didn't go out anywhere. Luther didn't Lou? meet Luther. You know, we could call him Lou. He yeah, we call out. him, not you. Not me. <laughs> me neither. He didn't go out <laughs> too much of places anywhere. He just didn't, you know, he wasn't a big, real kind of people person. Kind of, you know, he was, you know. He stayed to himself. Yeah. So he comes, he comes 
to the party. And why is the, the first year he came, I'm sitting there, I'm drinking wine, drinking wine. I forgot to eat. So meanwhile, I'm sitting, everybody's playing, got a nice band playing, and everybody's having a good time, and they're just rocking and having a good time. And then all I remember is I passed out. And they said they brought me up because the way my house was built, it was all glass where you could just see, so you could see from my bedroom to everywhere. Yeah, because yeah, so you was a player, me, man. Hey, yeah, man, you got to have glass everywhere. And mirrors. Hey. Yeah, but you know, I mean, I'm just saying. But so, so, so they bring me up through the crowd because it's just everybody's there, and they're like, "Hey!" It was like, "Oh yeah, one too many," and they're banding, and they're playing, they party, and they party, they party, and they party, and then Luther calls me like the next day. He goes. Whoa, boy, he said, that was a hell of a party. He said, you should have been there. <laughs> Everybody was in that jam. You was finished. <laughs> I was done. I was done before 12. To the I first party you, that he comes to of yours, too. to. <laughs> so, but he came year after year after year because he enjoyed it. It was like yeah. family. Like everybody would just, we would all be in there hanging and had a little band and was playing and we would just be in there jamming and everybody was having a good so time. So back, back then. Who was your crew? Cause you, you I mean you throw my these crew. names, man. man. Like, shoot, my crew. Cause I know you was moving me, man. My crew, which is still uh, my crew, still most of the day. Eddie, um, Ray, uh, Arsenio, Ray, Sugar Ray, Leonard, um, Arsenio. He got Ray, Sugar, Sugar. Uh, shoot, and it's like we all of us. This thirty plus years of yeah. you know, a balling. We, man, let me tell you, <laughs> 30, 30 plus years <laughs> of balling, <laughs> of pouring to, champagne. Man, we let me tell you, that was those were the good old days where, you know, they didn't have <laughs> cameras and stuff. So yeah. we used to go to the clubs, and Roxbury was like the spot that I um, mean, Arsenio used to. Well, we used to live in Roxbury, and it was so funny because every time we would go to Roxbury, we walk into Roxbury. Like you could just see the niggas' faces, like they get the wrinkle in their foreheads. Like here come these motherfuckers. Because the, the girls are going to act different. <laughs> they, no, man, we, we was terrorizing the army LA. superstar <laughs> and the comedian genius who has his own TV show. That's the biggest show in the Wearing world. Wearing leather, everything. Man, let me tell you, they said they used to Rock think I, everybody used to go. Do you, do you own a piece of that show? Cause I was on that scene like every other week. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we just you that's know, your partner. Yeah, partner. we yeah. just be hanging in, and so you know, we used to get to see all the movies before they were released. They had this place up there at Paramount, and man, we used to be up there and we would hang out, have the girls. I remember one night we, the big earthquake was uh, came. We were at Roxbury's, and I'm sitting inside the car, hanging out, talking to this girl, and he's standing outside, talking to this girl. And security guy standing outside. And I'm sitting here talking to her and, you know, trying to set it all up. You got to set the booty up rise, they say. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there talking and we boom, 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 talking. Next thing you know, the car is like this, going like this. And I'm going, these things are be stupid, man. You think it's playing? And he opened the door and goes, earthquake! Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, what? I mean, that was the big one, too. Yeah. Oh, that was the big one? Yeah, yeah. We was at Roxbury's. <laughs> So you weren't about to let the earthquake stop your pit. Oh man. hell no! It was a hell. It actually helped. <laughs> <It> actually helped. <laughs> you probably ain't got nowhere to go. You didn't even know. All the roads are closed. Let me tell you, your building has collapsed. Come on, roll with me. Oh, man. Your building has your, collapsed. Yeah, your building gone. <laughs> yeah, man. We had. I mean, it was just the times back then was just like. We were just having fun. Yeah. We were just having fun. And it was like everybody was kind of just doing their own thing where it was just like. But at know, the highest level. High level. Yeah. Yeah. At the highest I remember levels. walking in through Broxbury one night and some guy going, Hey, man, you think you can, I can come in with y'all? And I was like, What? It was your boy Chris Tucker. He was like, Yeah, man, they won't let me in. It's like, come on, man. You can roll. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, man, I still remember that, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
Chris Tucker. Yeah, man. Get the little 20, homies in sometime. Yeah. Yeah, get the homies in sometime, man. Yeah. Uh, love him, man. It's just such a great guy. I my blessing, to, honestly, I'm grateful for all the success of the music, but it's just the people that I've had an opportunity to meet and the people yeah. that have become a part of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm listen, I'm a stickler. When I say your family, and I say your friend, my friend, mm -hmm. listen, I I don't care when, lose or draw, right or wrong. As long as I can have an opportunity, if you're wrong, at some point we'll go and sit down and talk and go, nigga, you should have done that. But when it comes down to saying what we have to do, when we got to do it, let's go. I'm asking no questions. It's yeah. like, let's go. What are we doing? Thing, the one thing that people know about me is family is not just those that have the same DNA, but family to me is those that I love and I care about. And I'm always the first on the front line. What we got to do, let's go. Yeah. Don't mess with my family. Don't mess with my family and we good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to say this, man. You know, on behalf of me and my brother, um, we really appreciate y'all giving us that stage. Yeah. On this oh, 40th thank anniversary you. tour, man. Man. Thank you. Was, like, yeah, yeah. Like that was, you know, that was big, man. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, for us to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. every night. I mean, I I opened. He didn't open. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You opened. I he, saw one. He, 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 he let me come out for like, you. Yeah, he let me come out like he got to come minutes. out on stage. <laughs> he warmed up my crowd. Wow, people was in the building already. I had to sing to the chairs first. <laughs> By the time I walked up, I'm like, it was crazy. Hey, take this what you've been doing. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, man, thank you for that, yeah. man. Because that was, you know, a great experience. An, an amazing experience, man. Man, true. Amazing experience. Yeah. Truly. Watch y'all rock. Yeah. Watch Guy rock. Man. Watch Sweat rock, man. And um, just see the people really like. Have fun. Go yeah. down that memory lane. Yeah. People were in that party. Partying. Man. Sweating their hair out. Partying. Yeah. yeah. Having and every beverage. night. In the road. They, they, like, they wasn't in their seats. They nah. was in the road. They was in the, it was, in the walking areas. They, yeah. they Wherever. They were partying, dancing, it was good singing times. their hearts out. For every night, did that. Man, Every night. Thank you for being a part of it because every night, man, like I said, the goal was to have people leave there every night and go... The whole show, everybody was great. That's what you heard consistently. Yeah. Everybody did their thing. And that's why I said it's about important that combinations. And when you go out here and these, there's, there's so many tours and so many people that are working, trying to get to make their living to do what they do. But it's still, what promoters haven't figured out yet still, how important it is of the combination of what you bring and who you bring mm -hmm. yeah. that will allow people yeah. to feel like, and especially today, feel like they're getting their money's worth and feel like when they're going, they're going, they're getting a chance and opportunity to see something that uh, they're going to really enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes the promoters, they just don't really, they st this still doesn't register to them that catalog is important for every person that comes on this, that, that you bring on there, they have to bring something to the table. Yeah. yeah. And those are the things that help to have people to decide, am I coming to see this? Yep. Yeah. I'm the coming. right package. We got new edition. Oh, you got Keith Sweat. Oh, you got Guy. You got Guy hey, back together. Y'all hey, put got, Guy back together. Yeah. 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 Aaron said, man, uh, you know, uh, only for y'all. Only for y'all. <laughs> you brought Guy <laughs> said, back together. Yeah. yeah I was that was so, so, in itself. It was like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was going. a blessing. We got, we got to yeah. be there. But I wish we could do, like I was saying earlier, I just wish if it was just a piece of advice that I can give all the groups. Yeah. It's to just understand you got to respect the next man. Yep. And if you could show a level of respect, respect doesn't mean you have to bow down or be walked on or walked over. It just means allow people to be heard mm -hmm. and make sure that you let them know that you respect them and you understand and 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 taking their point of view in consideration and you might not see eye to eye it might creatively it might not but just the fact that i'm here i hear what you're saying and i hear what you, you know so you it allows people just to it's just like when i argument when people argue they argue because 
they want to be heard. And that's why it gets loud, because somebody could be telling the truth all day long, but if you are screaming and yelling at them, or you're yelling at each other, you're on the defense. So I can't hear you, because mm-hmm. I'm being attacked. Yeah. But when you can calm down and sit down and have a conversation, and if you respond when someone is speaking after they finish, to say, I hear what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. But what I was trying to say was, blah, blah, blah. You'll have a conversation. At some point, you can kind of meet somewhere in here to figure out, okay, how do we get past this? It's all about the communication and the how. And, you know, leading with love doesn't hurt. Ass. Man. You're not, you're, you're not soft. You're not a sucker just because you lead with love, love. because you lead with good intent. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And, 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 and being the first to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, it, listen, I you don't, don't mind. keep a score. I, it ain't about keeping score. About go, keep how many score. times I got to say, I'm, I say it first. It's just no, that, just, okay, how do we just get, get there? to this point and resolve yes. whatever the issue is? And it starts with just somebody being able to go, okay, we don't have to do I mean, listen, you don't have to take the volume up. That's okay. I hear what you're saying. I hear, Oh, let me let you finish saying what you need to say. Yeah. And when people are being, feel like they're being heard, a lot of times you could find a way to come to some kind of common grounds to figure out absolutely what the issue is. absolutely yeah, yeah. I want to say too to one of the grading greatest casting jobs of all time is Luke James playing Johnny, playing Johnny oh Cuff. that's my dog that's my little brother and you know that's man. our fa- that's our family oh, but we saw Johnny Gill that kid, I, it, it, we saw Johnny Gill when we yes. watched it movie and and think about this Cause I knew you before I knew him. Before you knew, really? Yeah. Wow. And then I was watched. That's it. Oh, it's crazy, man. And Luke and I, because at that time my mom had gotten sick during the time mm-hmm. that the you guys was filming, and we met maybe twice. And I still watch to this day when I see it. It's like sitting there looking, going, "This he caught just the essence of, of you, what, man." And it yeah. was like sitting here with little. To a little to work with because I was back in D.C. dealing with my situation with my mom. So, I mean, he, man, he freaking nailed it. And I was just like, dude, my dude for life. <laughs> They're just kindred yeah. spirits, man. <laughs> yeah. Both you guys are. Yeah, just great, great. Fun, fun. How, did, how did it feel watching guys. yourself and watching y'all's story? Because everybody was, don't get that. Everybody don't get a biopic. Oh, everybody listen, don't get, you and, know, and a mini series. And it ain't always done right. Most yeah, of the time it's not done right. yeah. Most yeah. of the time, it's not done right. This new edition yeah. series? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Nailed it. But we were hands on. But I can say this, and I know Mike's probably going to kill me, but Mike was so passionate about this Bivens mm-hmm. that he was not letting it go without everything being. And everybody was involved. Every, all the guys, everybody, yeah. but Mike was the most passionate because he's been talking about this for years. Yeah, We're talking about it for years, and he stayed on top of it, and 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 they nailed it. That was incredible. They nailed it. And I must shout out my big sister, Latanya New. Talk to talk. Who was at BT at the time? Yeah, and she was very instrumental in making sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they didn't yeah. fuck nothing up. Yeah. <laughs> we had so many people. You know what I mean? She was like, "Listen, yeah. they not, not on yeah. my watch. Not yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not these guys. I love New yeah. Edition. Yeah, yeah. What? that's that's what made it a blessing, Chris, man. So Chris many Robinson. that was rooting yeah. for us. Oh, my man, Chris. Man. Yes, yes, yes. That's my guy. And and Mr. Busby over here. Yeah, you know what yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, I hear myself say, so so Tank ain't in it. Which is what we what we doing? Like, doing? <laughs> gotta let my guy audition or something. Man, because yeah. I was originally supposed to play Stro. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Really? Yeah. Yep. He's like, yeah. You need you need to play me. And um and I was like, okay, I'm in. Whatever you need, pop. No. Yeah. Yeah. Really? yeah. And when we did, we went and did the we went and did the read through. Um, I was reading, of course, his part, but then he was like, Gerald, the, Gerald Busby wasn't there. So he's like, read the Gerald Busby part too. I was like, cool, I'll read all of it. So <laughs> yeah, we, I'll read all I'm of reading it. everything. Yeah. So when we finished, because I had done some uh, some uh, some camera tests with the little kids mm-hmm. already. And so... Um, as Brooke or as, as, as Gerald? Brooke. As Brooke, okay. And so, and so when I, when we finished the table read, he was like, can I talk to you? Let me talk to you outside. I was like, I was like, yeah, it was great. So we go outside and he's like, he's like, did you did you feel that? I was like, yeah, absolutely. Every, yeah. What's your mom? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, when you when you were Gerald, like, like that Gerald Busby just like 
it just it just felt right. Mm. I was like, I was like, I was like, well, you know, I mean, that's, I know that world. I mean, I know Joe Buzz. Yeah. So yeah. he was like, he's like, he's like, because you as Brooke, he said, I don't know how to dial you down. Mm. I said, I said, what do you mean by that? He said, as soon as you walk on the cam onto the onto the screen, mm-hmm. you absorb the camera. Mm. And your stated your your stated power is not what Brooke is. Brooke right. is understated wow. power. Wow. Wow. So it wasn't him not necessarily knowing how to dial me down. It was me mm. not knowing how Dials to dial down. me down. Oh wow. Yeah. Because as I watched him cast Wood Harris and in Wood the is park, a master at that. He was just I think I think he was just perfect for that understated power role. Right. Because we could we can tell just by being around Brooke uh-huh. that he don't have to say much. No. He get his t- point across. He's a freaking tyrant. <laughs> He's gonna get his point across. <laughs> it fucking took us one day. It was a hundred and ten degrees outside, and he was like, we were getting ready for the tour, and he had us rehearsing. This motherfucker closed the windows, turned off the AC, and he was a chain smoker and had our asses in there going back to back to back to back. I was like, I didn't sign up for this shit. <laughs> for the recent tour? No, this no, was no, during the, the heartbreak tour. Okay, I was about to Man, say, he still? Used to, <laughs> we were killing, we had almost the tour, died. You are fresh in the group. Huh? You're fresh in the group at this point. Oh, when this yeah. is happening, yeah. Yeah, but man, shoot, he was, and he, you would, we would rehearse, and when you, you could start, once you learn all the routines, we all have to do them uh, by, by ourselves. By yourself, yep. And when you fuck up, you could be almost at the end of the the the, the, the whole show. Do it from the top. Well, I got, you got to go all the way back from the top. The and whole show. The whole show. You yep. have to go Do back from to the top. top and you'd be like, from hey, man, this is bullshit. <laughs> oh, he wasn't fucking around. <laughs> oh, he didn't a, play. But it's, it's a method to his madness. It's just the, man. I, yeah. Apparently. It can't, yeah. it, like that can't, what he has done can't be duplicated. Yeah. With no yeah. addition, no. with boys to men. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it just can't be, it can't be duplicated because for one- They'll probably call uh, you know child, child services, services on him exactly because <laughs> if I knew the number back then I would <laughs> I <laughs> like this nigga tripping kill us what is he doing he's making us dance look at my goddamn phone um, can you hear me um, I got I took coughing and choking I got these Willie these Air Willie Nelsons on these Air Willie Nelsons on <laughs> <laughs> Dancing us to death. Send somebody. And he keeps blowing smoke in my he face. He keeps blowing smoke. <laughs> Send somebody. Oh, <laughs> it is man. enough. Oh, oh man. I can't stand the rain. <laughs> oh, that's just great. That's great. Well, I love my guys. I love Brooke. Man, even with Brooke, our relationship has come full circle, even with him over. Um, over the years and I tell you the key was when it started was the day that Kobe's plane went down hmm. that's when that call was made to Mike and I said hey man life is too short so we ain't, we can't keep doing this Yeah, and that's when now everything started and for us and from that point from that day forward it just it just built and I am so grateful and proud of my brothers like all of them yeah. that listen man I ride and die for them all. <laughs> oh, I'm the oldest out of everybody. So um, them understanding that for years I've been fighting to make sure everybody's okay. It's never been my just it's about me. It's always been about I have and I always felt the, the obligation, the duty to protect those are my little brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Even protect them from themselves. <laughs> But it was always about that and then to watch how everybody come full circle and then just the fact that they even allow me to have um, and trust me to continue to try to make sure we're all in the right place and where we need to be is just important. And everybody puts in their hand and everybody has, you know, contributes. But, you know, at the end of the day, they know I fight from a different place and I fight to go, I'm protecting my brothers, all of us. <laughs> So, love them, man, and so grateful. Man, listen, and, and we love y'all. Thank we you. love y'all. The world. Definitely yeah. the world of R&B. Man. 
Yeah, yeah. They, have, they, they talk about that authority thing? Yeah. <laughs> this is it. What you got for us, Chief? What you got for us? Something has to be your favorite. Mm. Top five. Yeah. Your top five. Hmm. Top five. Mm. Your top five. R and B singers. Come on. R and B songs. Come on with the ground. Yeah. yeah. Come on with it. Uh, well, clearly now you're one. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you done worked your way up. I've been there. You now you're up, up in, in the list. <laughs> Mr. Johnny Gill. Mr. My, my, my himself. Yeah. Your top five R&B singers. Stevie won. But one. Start there. Mm-hmm. That's just. Mm. My God. Uh, Luther, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Teddy three. Why not? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Wow. And then it's a free fall from there because there's so many. But um, people might gonna hate me for this one. Talk your talk. But I got I gotta give Kells his props. Mm, come on, come on. Just, gotta give Kells. This is his the R and B. Yeah, yeah. My yeah. podcast, R&B. Yeah. 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 And I, I'm not just saying that because you're sitting here, but you don't work your way up in there, that boy. Come on now. Don't come on that, that boy. <laughs> Look here, <laughs> boy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't work your way up in there now. Now, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> come in here, man. Come <laughs> And I, I let you in on another little one. <laughs> you wrote this song called My Cry. Remember that song? Mm. Mm. I was going through it with uh, me and Ira at that time, and we was going at it, button heads and going toe to toe. It had nothing to do with the song, but me and her was going at it. Of course, and we ended up <laughs> coming full circle. They come best of homies. But you know how when you with labels and you yeah. you be button having creative differences and button head, we was having some other differences. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but and we, I remember. We kept sitting there going, shoot. And I kept going, what are we going to do? Can we? How are we going to do this? And she was like, you going to do this song? I was like, how are you going to fucking make me do what? <laughs> so we was going at it. But I was, I'll never forget that song. And I still have that one joint, that joint in my uh, in my playlist. No way. <laughs> yes, yes, Great yes. Mike, Mike Cry. This guy, man. Mike Cry. This guy. Special. Yeah. Man. And that's why I said it. it, it being from DC, I, listen, it just adds to it. But your your yeah. gift and talent is just is what it is. And dude, listen, don't sit over here and act like we're forgetting about you. Oh, <laughs> you trying to sneak out? You trying to sneak out? You trying to sneak out before the party starts? He does. He does. I don't want to have to blow up the spot to tell everybody. I, you know, I've been knowing that little boy. That, 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 that boy was like this little boy. This, like this little boy. Come on, boy. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got the truth on it. Hey Tank, what you may not know <laughs> yeah. is I shouted this man out on Soul Train. Wow. When they asked me and Bob and my brother Ronnie, who our favorite singers were, same, same type of thing, and like who, you know, inspired us. I'm 10 years old. I'm like, and Johnny Gill. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes. Yes. That's man, been crazy. one of my favorites. Man. And it's so funny because one day I was uh, watching Jeffrey Osborne and he was doing um, uh, this television show. And that was in 83, my first single had come out. And I remember, uh, forgot the guy's name, that show he was doing. And they asked him who was like one of the upcoming uh, up and coming artists. And, uh, and I remember Jeffrey said, there's this kid. Uh, named Johnny Gill. You got to understand what it felt like not knowing Jeffrey Osborne. Yeah. Fan of his. Wow. Sitting at home and you're watching the Merv Griffin show. Merv Griffin show. Yeah. And, um, and he shout you out. And he shout me out. And I just, Nuts. I was in shock. And I'm just sitting there and I'm like, wow, it's Jeffrey Osborne. And then shortly after we, we met and been brothers he's since. a guy yeah oh I, he's yeah. A guy. one of our favorite episodes yeah, man, he too. he's a guy i that's my yeah. dude for life and i tell you he has uh been a part of my life since i was a kid yeah 16 17 years of age yeah yeah all right johnny your top five r&b songs i gotta put oh my top oh my yeah, god yeah, jesus yeah. christ come on um come on. gee well, of course, it's going to start with Stevie, but now I got to figure out, out all them damn hits. I keep telling you, got way too many hits. <laughs> but Let's pick one. Um, Come on. I'd have to say ass. Mm. Oh, mm -hmm. my yeah. God. Yep. Um, uh, then I got to go with Lou, Luther. Uh, that house is not a home mm -hmm. is where I, I think I first realized and I discovered what the feeling of love was. <laughs> wow. Because I was dating Stacey at the time, and I'll never forget when that record came on. Whoo, man. You know, my heart started beating fast. Mm -hmm. Things started acting up and started rising. And I say, this is something different this, here. This is it. This is it. <laughs> this is, I'm I hot. like, man. I'm hot. I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> Temperatures rise. Temperatures rise. Uh, <laughs> hey, he said, when I climb the stairs huh. and turn the key, he, he, oh, please be there saying that you're still in love with me. And I was like, oh, yeah, talk. Only on the only <laughs> one podcast. <laughs> only here. Yeah. <laughs> Authentic oh R&B. Yeah. yeah. And we Organic. Don't, and these mics have no auto-tune. These yeah. mics have no auto-tune. Yeah. Yeah. Say yeah. it again. Yeah, these mics have no auto-tune. No special sauce. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, man. <sighs> okay, that's that's two. And Teddy, Three. I have to go with... Oh, my God. Um, no, let's go Jeffrey. Yeah, I might think this is an obscure joint. But... Uh, uh, you, you're just the sweetest peaches and cream. Come on now, that's not obscure. I, I don't know if people know it. Not obscure. Uh, I told Jeffrey and he made me a promise that if I ever get married, he's got to do that one at the wedding. <laughs> got yeah. to do that one at the wedding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that. But he had a million of them too. It's yeah. like, man. Um, and what of course, for? Donnie Hathaway. Yeah. Man, a song for you. Yeah, you just can't get around. <laughs> you just can't get around. And I remember someone telling me when I was a kid, they kept going, "You know, you sound like a little." And I said, "Ooh, this guy named Have you ever heard of this guy named Donny Hathaway?" I was like, "No." And I remember sitting there listening to a, a song for you, and then I sat there and I listened, and I'm going, "Whoa!" Something hit me where I was just like, "Man, he who the heck is this guy?" But you could hear the this the conviction in his yes. in his phrasing and his just in his the notes and it was just like I was like man and that's how I got turned on to a uh, to to Donny Hathaway. I feel the same way about his daughter too. Oh, like, oh, yes. Oh my God. But it seemed like over the years she just really just developed. She's just into a this, different kind like of instrument. Instru like, yeah. she's, yes, the key is an she's instrument. An instrument. Whew, man, she's. Yeah. She's calculated, yes. methodical, yes. diabolical, <laughs> yes, 
yeah. foolishness. Yeah. 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 And you ain't hearing a flat or sharp. No, oh, no, no she's, 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 she just she got, be like, and she can do anything. anything. Yeah. No, her yeah. vocal is amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. She got her dad and more, I would and say. More. Yeah. 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 Okay. Absolutely. You got one more. One more. Um, wow. Gee, one more. Doesn't have it could be anything. Anything. It's your world. Man, that's you know, I would I, I know it looked like I might be stuck on myself to say this, yeah, but well, go ahead. That talk can you stand the rain I mean, nah, no, 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 no. I look at by talk your talk. Sometimes they're by I'll be looking and listening to that young too. <laughs> Listen to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> imagine being able to sing Can You Stand the Rain every night and it's yours. Can you imagine? I that? tell you what I did. I tell you a little secret about my 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 I did and I had I was nominated. No, I had won the the uh, male vocalist of the year of the Soul Train. And it was this girl, I won't say cuz she's you know, yeah, actress you, you know popular. Okay. You know, okay. Yeah, you're an actress. This you is know, the thing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I try to keep the industry, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Try to keep know. it plethora. Yeah, I, I got to do what I have Work to do. Work your way around. Make yeah, your yeah, rounds. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, get around. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, okay, this girl's giving me a real challenge. And so she went with me to the uh, awards. And when we got back, I had... Uh, uh, my boy to put the champagne on ice. I've never, I had never, before my mama, I had never ever sat and sang to a girl to figure out if I had a, that'll get me in quicker. Never. And I remember we got King back from the awards and I remember going back, sitting down at the piano and I had popped, we popped the champagne and my mama wasn't released yet. Oh, he's giving her the unreleased too. Okay. And I'm yeah. sitting there playing my mama at the piano. And so we went from the piano to the floor, from the floor to the bedroom. And I said, God damn, what would I have been doing all the time? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Should have been using the house for evil. You need to. Why? You making it hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, hot tomato. No. Uh, Who didn't tell? What the hell? But you Somebody have, forgot to tell. You, you didn't have Babyface Records to sing to. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be the right record. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, yeah. my. Yeah. 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 You know? Shit happens. And it went down. I was like, damn, okay. I, I never I never wanted to use my power for Me neither. That. Me neither. I always thought it was unfair. I was like, that ain't right if I just start singing this one. Yeah, I thought that too, but that might <laughs> Yeah. All right, here we go. Got it. We're going to make you Voltron. You're a super R&B artist. We want to know who you're going to get the vocal from, mm -hmm. who you're going to get the performance style, yeah. the styling, and the heart of the artist. Right? Let's build your artist. Who are you getting the vocal from for your super R&B artist? One vocal. Luther Vandross. Start there. The greatest storyteller that there is. When it comes down to painting, painting telling a story... Yeah. Woo, they just don't He well. didn't even move on stage. I don't know I don't know if he walked five feet. Right. If right. He didn't have to. He didn't have and to. And you just sit there and, and you're just, just like, be like oh, Yeah. Man, he could paint an in disrespectful canvas that's just woo. To Man. all the jumping around in church taking off I do. Yeah, so <laughs> Luther Def Luther definitely Who are you getting the Oakland. performance style from? Performance style, surprisingly, I'm gonna say the young uh, cocky, wild, crazy Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown. Mm -hmm. Bobby that guy, let me tell you something. Brown. Menace to Ooh, society. Man. Bobby Brown. When Bob Menace. was rock man, let me tell you something. You'd be sitting there looking, going, this thing got rubbers in his leg? What the hell? <laughs> and that. Uh, hey, listen, and Bob was trying to give y'all work on that man, new, on that any heartbreak too. Were you, were you thinking Ooh. about that as you're rehearsing and you're about to be this new member, like, I'm replacing Bobby Brown to a certain degree, even though he had already been out. You know, but like, I never thought because the way they brought it to me was like, you're gonna be, you know, we want to go back to the five member group, blah, blah, right, blah. right? So it never really dawned on me until even the blow up with Ralph when we were there in Minneapolis, mm -hmm. and you realize I'm like, what the hell did I just walk into? Bobby told me, and it was so funny because when we all got together doing the uh, the, the heartbreak tour uh, after the tour, I went out on my own solo and I'll never forget Bob came out with me Bob used to come 
<laughs> to L.A. when he wasn't living in L.A. He used to stay with me, and everybody used to talk about me and him uh, beefing. beefing and yeah. battling with each other. And y'all at the crib chilling. And he would be in the crib. Yeah, that's <laughs> and crazy. So funny. That's crazy. He, <laughs> and he would, um, as a matter of fact, but Bob told me himself, he was like, I remember him telling me, he was like, man, when you first got in the group, dude, I did not like you. I was so jealous. Um, and then he was like, when you open your mouth, I was like, God damn. <laughs> like, man. And he was like, from that point, that was what took him where he was like, I ain't fucking with that. <laughs> but he said, he told me himself. And, and it was so funny because we, I was out on tour and he came out with me for a while. And I remember one day we got on the bus on my bus and he was just like man he says I envy you and I said what why and I remember him saying because I don't know like know if I'll be able to dance for the rest of my life like this he's like but nigga you'll be able to sing like this for the rest of your mm. life <laughs> mm. it never dawned on me I never wow. even thought about mm. you know and I'm looking going nigga but you <laughs> you Bobby, Bobby shit Brown. yeah <laughs> And at the time, he and, got the biggest. He's yeah, yeah. He was like you know biggest records so, in the world. So, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, wow. but um, yeah. That the, he was to me, you know. Besides MJ, the performer of no, all Bobby films, Brown. just you yeah. know, yeah. And Bobby performance, that young, wild, and the free wild, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, who are you gonna get the styling from? The, with the artist, with the drip, with the drip. Yeah. <sighs> Come on, Reverend Ike. Come, come on. on. <laughs> <laughs> the styling is probably going to have to come from, y'all might think this is weird, but I'm going to have to say Prince. I wish I was the little guy Prince the way was, he used to. Prince is the guy. Prince just Prince used is the to guy. be. the guy. The stuff, because I still to this day like bright colors and but I don't, I, I am scared to try anything that's of color. And I used to, the way he would just rock his with, you know, you just be like, yo, if I was that little <laughs> man. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> what? Yeah, man. What? I'd give. I said, if I was, I, I if I was I that little. That if I was that little. If I was that little, I'd give that little nigga run for his money. <laughs> 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 and then, and then he would have pulled off on you on his motorcycle. I don't know if y'all were ready for this, no, Johnny. You, no, you weren't. I don't. I don't think y'all were ready. Y'all had no idea. <laughs> no way. There's no way they knew. That they this had is, no idea. Uh, they didn't know that this is what Johnny Gill is in real life. Okay. The passion of the artist. The heart of the artist. Ooh, the passion would probably be Donny Hathaway. It mm, just, yeah. I don't think, I've never seen anyone, every note you hold on to because, you know, I often said when I found out what he went through and mm. how, you know, the challenges that he had, I said that if someone was to offer me that voice, but I would have to go through that journey that he went through. As much as I love him, I I just I just be an average Joe talking about paper or plastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just can't. The, 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 when you listen to the passion, the pain, the pain, the, the, the everything in his voice, it's like it just stops you in your track. And every time I hear, I don't care what song he's saying, you go, man, I wonder where he, where he was at, what was going on there, yeah. like what was he going through? Yeah. Like it's like. You hear it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I would say passion. I don't think it gets no no stronger than no better than that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We ain't gonna let you up out of here just yet, though. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cause you, you didn't say some names. <laughs> you said some names. <laughs> what you got for him? I ain't saying no names. Hey, I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. I ain't saying no names. Who you was? Who you in? What you did? Don't say she. Yeah. I ain't saying no names. So this segment right here, okay. it's called I ain't saying no names. Okay. Will you tell us a story, mm -hmm. funny or fucked up, mm -hmm. or funny? And fucked up in the travels of Johnny Gill, Lil John, the first Lil John, <laughs> yeah, the first Lil John, <laughs> nigga, that was great, <laughs> new edition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Back to solo Johnny Gill. Mm-hmm. And then, to LSG. And, and then. <laughs> come on, man. And then back to the back to and new then, edition. Don't forget, and then back to new edition. Six and don't minutes. forget, we didn't record, but there was oh, Heads of State. Heads of State. Oh, heads of State. Heads of State. Yeah. I open for y'all. The lead yeah. singers. <laughs> I open for y'all. Yeah. Man, you done been in 12 groups, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm still open for a few more. <laughs> <laughs> If you need a group member, <laughs> so, yeah. so, hmm, we need to know in the times, the, the times where they didn't have no Instagrams, mm. they didn't have no Twitters, Lucky no X, you. no tick, ticky tock. Lucky you. <laughs> Tell us a story from them times, man. <laughs> Just don't say no names. Yeah, I can't say no names. But Please. Man. Oh, my God. You can tell us where you was. Well, I can recall this young lady, once mm. again, she was an actress. Yeah. Mm. I don't ask me how. I don't know. Listen, man. Big movies, small movies? Uh, yo, she's been in some Late night movies? movies. No, she's been in some big movies. Big as a matter movies. of fact. Okay. okay. You know, uh, I just like working women. You know, they had a job. And I knew, you know, yeah. I don't know, they brought they, something to the table. Yeah, they got yeah, somewhere to go. Saying. They had somewhere to go, something to do. Yeah. But I remember her, I, she would show up everywhere. Um, when we was on tour, she would just show up, show up, show up. And then I started dating this other girl. And I had her over at the house. And I'm sending her off to go to the airport. And the other girl I was dating comes over. And she's in the house hanging out and chilling. And I'm thinking, this other girl's gone. Yeah. She turns around, makes a U-turn, comes back, knocks on the door. And uh, I'm like, "Uh, what you need? (laughs) What you need? (laughs) What? Hey, listen, I'm a little, I'm a, I'm a, listen, man. I was a little young. I couldn't think as fast. <laughs> what you need? What you need? <laughs> That's a dick. <laughs> oh, so my God. <laughs> I thought she was gone. <laughs> And then I didn't act like I, I'm looking out the window going, huh? <laughs> no way. So she said, I know you you got somebody in there. And I'm like, ah, oh, what you talking about? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I'm like, fuck it. She knows whatever. I said, hey, listen, this is my friend. She's got to come in. She claims she left something here. <laughs> So <laughs> I told him when she got to the door, hey, listen, we don't sign no shit in here, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> and then she walks, she looks, she goes, and who are you? She goes, who are you? She goes, well, who are you? She goes, who are you? <laughs> I said, I told you, no, we're not going to start no shit up in here. <laughs> so I told her, I said, to both my friends, Y'all both my friends. <laughs> so oh, man. I got her coat and gave her her coat. And she said she was she was done. She was through with me. Until I looked around at the next city. And here she, she comes. Was, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and standing there at my room door and crying. I'm like, damn, I thought you got rid of me. <laughs> I thought you got rid of me. <laughs> Did you let her in the room? I realized, oh yeah, that's when I realized I'm a troop him. <laughs> hey, ladies. <laughs> I, I didn't realize I had that kind of power. <laughs> the one time I ever got busted, and that was the first and the only time. First and only. And you pimped your way out of it. Man, she Man, came like back you with tears. You actually didn't say nothing. I just told him, I said, listen, we're not having no shit, right? You're my friend and you're my friend. She technically didn't, she didn't, she didn't start no shit. She came no, in, she, she got, got her, her coat. Got her coat. And yeah, yeah. When she bounced out, she said she was done with me. That's okay. She wasn't really done. She wasn't no, done. She wasn't done. She wasn't done. She couldn't be done with daddy. She couldn't done with daddy. Uh, she she couldn't be done with daddy. She left there talking about why, 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 why. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
I don't think you, Johnny Gill. I don't think you understand. Johnny Gill. I don't think you understand. Johnny Gill. This is great. <laughs> bro, let me issues. say something. Let me say something, bro. <laughs> you, bro, you do so awesome, man. You so awesome, man. I've known you for, for, for many years, man. I've always known you were a goofball. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's awesome for the world to see. And it's awesome to see you in in in, in good spirits, man. Thank you. And, yeah. Thank and, you. And and, and yeah. you're still moving time. on yeah. and pushing on, man. Yeah. yeah. Continuing yeah. on the legacy of your mom, continuing yeah. on the legacy that that you've built um that continues to inspire us. Thank you. And wow. and that will continue to inspire generations to come, brother. Wow. Well, I, thank I, you. I hope you know that. Well, can I just say I'm proud of both of you guys, man, taking thank the you. bull by the horns or however they say it because mm -hmm. R&B when you think about it people keep have this myth about R&B being dead but it's not dead it hasn't gone anywhere it's still here it still exists and it's just a matter of like what you guys have done to create a platform to remind people and give people somewhere to go to come to see and understand that it still lives it's, it's still not lives. gone anywhere no. so it's you guys have been doing and then uh Incredible job! I've watched from the from the from from Jeffrey Osborne to KC to you know Bobby and the, and the, 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 the brothers, yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. brothers and everybody, man. And I just that what you guys are doing with giving everybody from the young to the old, just everybody an opportunity to be able to tell a story and have people to understand who they are and where they come from. Because you don't know where you're going unless you know where you come from. Okay. And you guys spread it out to the allowing just every people come in. You guys yeah. are doing an amazing job. And I can't tell you how proud I am of both of you guys, man. Thank, Thank you, bro. Man. And then my DMV brother over here. Yeah. <laughs> come on, talk to Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tank. I'm Jay Valentine. And this is the Army Money Podcast, yeah. the authority yeah. on all yeah. things. I wish a nigga would say it wasn't. <laughs> R&B. Yeah. And this has been uh, the, the Pimpin' Edition. <laughs> yeah. 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 The Pimpin' Johnny. The Pimpin' Johnny. <laughs> Lil John himself. Make some noise for Johnny Bill, y'all. <laughs> 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 Ooh, yeah. R and B money. <laughs>